Yes, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Star Insurance Specialist Project Cars 2 New Zealand Championship, brought to you live from the heart of Auckland City here in the Sky Tower itself in LPL Studios. Guys, it's going to be a fantastic week of esports action here in the motorsports world. You're joined here once more by Matt, Simon and Brendan. And guys, we're into week six. It's the final leg of the championship. And guys, how are we feeling? Simon, How? what are you expecting in the final few races? There's only six tracks to go. Yeah, six tracks, obviously. So it's we're sort of at the, the pointy end of the championship, I guess you'd say. It's, it's crunch time for these guys. It's the time when they really need to hunt it down and really start thinking hard about strategy and thinking you know what do i need to be doing in these races to make sure i'm up the pointy end at the end of it, it may mean you know not winning it you might just want to be up the front there and um you know, sort of in, in second or third or uh, and being a little bit more conservative perhaps than, than what you might be regularly yeah, well, we heard that from uh, Jordan Penny. He said he's quite comfortable to sit in second. I'm pumped. I'm very excited about after last week. You know, we saw some amazing racing. We saw slipstreaming really come in for the first time. We've seen new rules come into play in this championship as well. So it's a championship, but it's all about strategy as well. And we're going to see some mix-up tonight as well around the rules, which we'll talk about a bit later as well. Yep, that's right. But before we go any further, guys, if you're sitting at home and you want to earn yourself a copy of the game, well, it's just like every other week, you can jump onto Twitter, tweet at Let's Play it Live HQ with the hashtag Project Cars 2 NZ. And, well, we're keeping the question simple this week. What's your favorite color for a car? Honestly, guys, I'm going to start with you. Simon, don't give me a boring answer. Red. That's, that's about as boring as it gets. Brandon, <laughs> give me something good. Still my answer, red. Red, all right. Is, is it really just because red cars are faster? Yeah, exactly. Red cars are faster. red. Well, guys, uh, clean, we already have proof that's not true because purple cars win races, according to J Jordan Penne. So we'll have to see if that still stays true tonight. But get on Twitter and tell us what your favorite color on a car is if you want to win a copy of the game. Now, guys, last week was probably the spiciest episode we've had yet. So let's take a look at what we saw during that week because there was so much going on in both of the tracks. That's right. Well, the first one was race one, Barcelona, Cataluna. It started with the qualifying that saw Penny and Northway McQueen out on top. Again, always Penny, but Scott McQueen there as well. It was a bad start, though, by Penny, which allowed Northway to take the lead for the entire race to come. And Penny, well, he was constantly on his heels, though, and a bit of a, a good racing down further down the pack. And then we had that drama. McQueen turning it around Josh Ritchie. Josh Ritchie was in the top three at the time, but dropped down all the way to eighth getting basically no points to his name. Meanwhile, Robert Northway up the front of the field. He took the win. Jordan Penny came second, and McQueen getting that controversial third-place finish. Now, race two, we went to that famous Le Mans, and, you know, everybody knows Le Mans, and we saw Northway actually play some pole. Robert Northway is at home last week, so that really worked in his favour. Uh, he came out of the grid far ahead, and he missed most of the race in action. All the race in action was down below those slip streams that you saw on the right. It was pretty cool. Lots of streaming. But Pene, he was out there. He was doing really well, but he made a major mistake. Not very of his characteristic, no doubt. And it's probably the first big mistake we've seen from him in a very, very long time, if at all. But of course, uh, it was Robert Northway once more taking that pole position away from Pene and earning himself a lot of points, especially after the previous week where he had two eighth place finishes. But here are the points that the races earned last week. And you can see Robert Northway with his two wins up there with 50 points. Scott McQueen trailing not too far behind. Also want to point out in third and fourth, Ethan Moore and Jordan Penne taking both of the Star Insurance Specialist fastest laps of the race. Then we had Josh Ritchie rounding out the top five. But here we go. Here's the Drivers' Championship. Jordan Penne currently leading the championship by 55 points. A massive lead. He's basically going to finish last on two occasions if one of these guys wants to catch up. Josh Ritchie currently in second place. Just three points behind him is Scott McQueen. These two will probably be at loggerheads again once again tonight. Robert Northway one point back of Scott McQueen in P4. That top four is who we're really looking for. Those are the guys who are going to be fighting for the championship. Then we've got Ethan Moore, Louis Di Manila, Michael Robinson and Jake Parker. Now interesting to note too that those guys in the last couple of positions basically out of the running now, right? Yeah, so I've actually gone ahead and crunched the numbers. Michael Robinson and Jake Parker cannot get first place. Even if everything goes their way, best case scenario, Jordan Penne, eighth place, and they get first place in the next few races, they're still looking at second as their best shot. But the real action, I want to say, second, third, and fourth. Four points between them, and the crazy thing is, 
only two of them are going to get any prize money. Yeah, well, they're in a, you've got to remember, guys, that this is it for, it's a big pull. It's $10,000 on the line, you know, and and uh, Josh Ritchie, who comes in every time, he loves the sound of his own voice, and he's like, I'm in it for the money and the fame, you know, every time he comes in studio, but he's really a, a calculated driver. So, you know, that top three, you know, you got Jordan Pena out there, and last week we saw, saw something interesting with the standings as well on the start-finish line. Do we want to touch on that? What happened there? Yeah, well, just to, just to put it really quickly, and I will clarify that I meant the top three races will get the prize money, but out of the second, third, and fourth, only two of those will get the prize money. But uh, <laughs> sure. on what you were saying is there was a bit of a bug in the game where it sh displayed someone getting a position ahead. I believe it was Scott McQueen uh, simply because of his false start at the start of the race. Uh, not too much, but we have amended the leaderboard yeah. to fit. So if you're seeing a few differences, don't freak out, guys. You're not going yeah. crazy. It's just us. That's just normal motorsport racing. It's great to see that. So um, we saw a bit of, I guess, uh, uh, controversy last week as well. Yeah, let's let's talk about this one because it's pretty big. We saw it in the highlights. Josh Ritchie, Scott McQueen. Let's have a look at it, guys, from a different point of view. Tell us about this one. Yeah, it was a bit of a juicy one. We sort of watched it and, and held our breath a little bit because we didn't actually get to see a proper replay of what happened. But here we go. This is basically what happened. Scott McQueen, in layman's terms, he just rear-ended Josh Ritchie. We can see here Josh takes sort of a, a more traditional racing line compared to what... Uh, McQueen was, McQueen went quite shallow and from that point of view it's fairly damning against McQueen. McQueen goes quite shallow here. You could say that maybe Josh was breaking a little bit late but he just basically hit him straight in the rear bumper and turned well, around. Well that is something that a lot of the, uh, the drivers have brought up is that they're coming into these corners and McQueen even said it himself that he's been taken out in other races where he slowed into a corner and he's, he's honest about it, he's slowed and he's just made the mistake and he's been taken out. Same thing again, he says that well maybe it was just that Josh Ritchie came in too slow. But Josh Ritchie, man, that interview, you can't you can't script that. That was gold. <laughs> it was pretty cool. That was absolutely gold. And as well, I, I've actually looked at Josh Ritchie's Twitter today. Uh, there's a hashtag going, justice for Ritchie. <laughs> and uh, I guess we'll find out what that means tonight. Uh, hopefully, it just means a nice clean race for him to go ahead and get first. But guys, the other man of the hour, Scott McQueen, we actually have him on standby. We can actually chat to him live right now to find out uh, essentially his side of the story. So <laughs> Scott, uh, I just want to quickly ask you, you've had a bit of mud slung at you over this incident. What, what do you have to say in your defense? Oh, it's racing and it kind of happens. It's not really much I can say about that. I misjudged his speed a little bit and he, he got worse off. Yeah, it looked like maybe you went quite shallow into the corner. You know, we, we looked at the, the replay there and it looked like uh, Josh was taking, I guess, I guess, the traditional racing line. From your point of view, do you believe that you were at fault or do you think it was just a bit of a racing incident at the end of the day? Oh, I think it's a bit of a racing incident. I, um, he was being pretty inconsistent. The uh, first lap I was behind him, he went really, really wide and ran off the track. And then that lap, he, he just slowed up a lot more than I was expecting him to. So. I love it. I love it. So in other words, you're saying, you know, uh, uh, you're watching him and in previous laps, he's gone nice and wide and you're, all right, he's going to go wide. I'm going to take on the inner line. And, and you know, uh, in racing, that does happen. And he came in for the block. Now, tell me about your strategy, dude. Is you, you know, you only had the game for three weeks beforehand. Has, you, has your strategy changed since you started this championship and you've seen how much and what you've got to change in the game? Or has it been consistent the whole time? Um, yeah, no, it's definitely changed. The, the first week, I sort of pushed pretty hard and, and tried, to, tried to get out in front. And then I, I got taken out in the second race there. So from then on, I just started to play it safe and it's been working pretty well. It's, it's better to finish the race and not get any incidents than it is to finish at the back. We've been sort of keeping an eye on sort of the point standings throughout the, the races, I suppose. Jordan Penny has obviously leaked it on you guys. He's 50 points ahead now. But between yourself, Josh Ritchie, and Robert Northway for second, third, and fourth, it's obviously fairly tight for you. You know, do you think it's an unassailable lead to Jordan or do you think you're, you're basically uh, hoping to get that $3,000 in second now? I think it's mostly just a fight for um, second and third for us. Unless Jordan makes a couple of big mistakes and ends up at the back, um, he's pretty much uncatchable. Well, look, you, so Scott, you're a bit of a, a man of mystery. You know, you've come on the show and, you know, you only had the game for three weeks and there's a, a big story behind you. So we're going to do some, we're going to play some games and, and you've got a <laughs> quick fire questions. You've got to think really fast and really quick on these. So I'm going to ask right. you questions and straight away you've got to answer them. NA or Turbo? Turbo. 
What superhero are you going to be? Oh, I don't even know. <laughs> Too slow. Favorite hobby? Uh, drifting, for sure. Drifting. Oh, very good. Very good. I like that answer. Describe yourself in three words. Um, pretty keep to myself, pretty quiet. Uh, love to get outside, though. That's, that's not three words. That's good enough. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you were invisible, where would you go? Uh, I don't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite motorsport? Uh, drifting, for oh, sure. You already answered yeah. that one. Yeah. Uh, if you could call your car something, nickname, what would you call it? <laughs> Lightning. Oh, hey. very nice, hey. very nice. Uh, and your favourite frenemy on the show? Uh, it's probably Josh at the moment. <laughs> very nice, fitting. very nice. It's fitting, yes, it's very fitting. Yeah. Uh, any strategies? Okay, what's your favourite um, track? Obviously, those are the quickfire questions. You can relax a bit. There's nothing too personal there. A any, any uh, I guess, preference on tracks tonight? Uh, Silverstone, because it's uh, a bit of strategy with the, the rain and pit strategy. So I think that'll keep the racing interesting. Yeah, for sure. And I think a little bit earlier this season, we saw it with that Hockenheim race where you, you somehow managed to snag the win, uh, your first one of the season. Tonight, obviously, strategy is going to be a massive part of it. We saw that pitting early uh, was really crucial in terms of getting off those slick tyres and onto the wet tyres. Do you sort of take the same sort of tack tonight and, and hope that you can get out there and really maximise your time on the, on the wet tyre? Yeah, well, Hockenheim, we all got caught out in the rain and... Silverstone's quite a long lap as well, so I think the best bet is to play it safe and pit early rather than trying to stick it out and getting caught out in the rain again. Yeah, for sure. And we, we're looking at some of your highlights uh, from the season so far. We're looking at that Hockenheim Grand Prix race where you did take that first <laughs> position. When you saw Josh was slowing down, what was sort of going through your mind at the moment? Because it all looked a little bit wild for us. We thought that Josh Ritchie had actually won the race, and then all of a sudden you managed to get up and, and win it by, I think, only two tenths. Yeah, yeah. I just I just kept my foot into it. I was, um, I seen Jordan was way off, so I knew I was going to get past him. And when I saw Josh didn't really have any pace on him, I just hoped, and yeah, it yeah, worked out. Definitely. And obviously consistency has been a, sort of the name of the game for someone like Jordan. Uh, heading into this final stanza of the championship, there's just six races to go for you. What's the mindset? Um, just to try and keep up with, with Jordan and Rob at the front. Um, Jordan makes a lot of mistakes if you can stay with him. So he's not the best if he's in the pack. So I think if we can keep the pressure on him, he's not likely to get any more wins. All right, Scott, thank you so much for joining us today. And, you know, we really look forward to your performance today and tonight's races. So good luck and, you know, have a blast. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much to Scott for jumping onto the show. It's good to get his side of the story a little bit as well and just getting a little bit of a look behind the man as well. Uh, some pretty good hobbies that you can see. Yeah, well. he loves drifting, which is a good start. You know, you could give it to him. He he drives home uh, after this, so we're uh, based live here right now in the Sky Tower if you're tuning in, and then he um, trinkles on home and he gets home about 1 or 2 a.m. every morning in Tauranga. So that's a, it's a pretty good commitment by him, and it's good to see. And these guys aren't on TV a lot, so, you know, for him to jump on camera and do it, pretty cool to see. And he, he aced it. I reckon he aced it. Yeah, for sure. And you complain when you get home at 10.30 p.m. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Thanks. Don't put that on here. <laughs> yeah, of course. Got to let everyone know. Yeah. But guys, let's move on with the championship because tonight we're going to see two new tracks. We're actually going back to the UK once more. So, Simon, tell us about these two tracks. Yeah, like Matt said, it's the second time we've been to the United Kingdom. It's week six, two circuits, two of my favorite circuits, actually, Donington Park, the host of the 1993 European Grand Prix. We'll talk a little bit about that later on. But then we go to the Stil Silverstone Grand Prix. Grand Prix circuit, the current host of the British Grand Prix. Two circuits which are, are very different in characteristics. One received a, a big overhaul recently uh, in, in Silverstone. And I think in terms of the weather conditions tonight, we're going to see quite a variance as well. Yeah, of course. We'll get into the weather conditions a little bit closer to the actual race. But of course, guys, we've got to look at what the racers will be driving in tonight. The beautiful, the sublime, the Janetta G55 GT4. Of course, we're going to get our local resident expert Simon to tell us all about it. Yeah, that Janita G55 in the beautiful blue Logitech gaming livery. Topping out at close to 300 kilometers an hour, this bad boy gets up to 0 to 100 in 4.3 seconds. 350 horsepower at just over a ton. This car produces a lot of downforce on the front and rear wing and produces a lot of downforce under the body of the car. Tonight, it's going to be really interesting to see how these guys utilize the downforce on a circuit like Donington, which is super fast and super flowing. 
All right, well, there you have it. The car, the racers will be ra racing in tonight. But guys, we're very close to getting into the race. But before we do, I need to remind you to jump onto Twitter and tweet at Let's Play Live HQ with the hashtag Project Cars 2 NZ. You can grow into the draw, grow, go into the draw to win a copy of the game for yourself. All you have to do is tell us what your favorite color of car is. Maybe it's the beautiful blue from Logitech that you just saw. But if you get on there, you can win yourself a copy of the game. But guys, we're going to be right back after after a short break with all of the racing esports action. Like us, you're passionate about cars. At Star Insurance Specialist, we create custom policies for Kiwis with exceptional vehicles. If you own a vintage, classic, performance, project or prestige car, your needs don't fit neatly into a box. We think special and unique cars deserve special and unique insurance. We don't let robots determine policy or price. Get on the road with a custom policy from Star Insurance Specialists. Go to starinsure.co.nz today. Welcome back to the Star Insurance Specialist Project Cars 2 New Zealand Championship. We're still Matt Simon and, of course, Brendan here. Uh, we're ready to get into the first race. But before we do, everyone, let's take a look at where the racers will be going for the first race of the night. Simon, take us all the way through this one. So here we go. It's the Donington Grand Prix circuit. Four kilometers long, just 12 turns. Once hosted the European Grand Prix in 1993. Has hosted the British Touring Car Championship and World Superbikes and was actually used as a military depot during World War II. So it's got a bit of history, this circuit. It's fast, it's super flowing, and it's super tricky too. These guys are going to have to uh, maximize the curb usage on a circuit like this because you do have to hit your marks and hit those apexes and get really good corner exit. Josh Rich she really likes to talk about corner exit and how that's really important. And I think it's no more important than a circuit here like Donington. And of course, something that you may have noticed if you looked at the track there, it's foggy. It's really, really yeah, foggy. foggy. The, the, your vision is going to be super impaired. Not not the biggest impact for uh, a lot of these guys uh, in, in the motorsport esports. Uh, but of course, we're going to be switching over to some rain during the race, and that's going to happen uh, about six laps in. Uh, and, of course, that's going to involve going to the pits, when you go to the pits, and, you know, changing out those tires. So, guys, we're going to go to the qualifying uh, very, very shortly just to get the grid ready, of course, because the racers are all going to have a few minutes to get their best shot at their best lap and then we'll order the grid accordingly. Yeah, you spoke about sort of the fog, and it'll be interesting for us because we're going to cut to the cameras on the track soon. You probably won't actually be able to see a lot, and it's pretty much the same situation for these, these drivers too. Uh, when you're on board, and I know, Brendan, we were driving on the circuit a little bit earlier, getting a bit of practice, you know, as a race car driver, you're looking for your apexes, you're looking for your marks. Can't it, see them. You literally can't see them. Yep. So for these guys, you know, if you're let's say, Louis de Manila, and you're, you're eighth, as we see, a white wall, and maybe the outlinings of Jordan Penny's car. If you're sitting in eighth, and then, let's say, Jordan Penny is in the lead, 
you're not going to be able to see Jordan just up ahead of you. It's just, it's super foggy and the, the conditions are not really conducive for, for racing, to be perfectly honest. No, and we look there on the left hand side of the screen. If you're just tuning in, you can see on the left hand side is your qualifying at the moment, even more, which is a bit of a surprise to see him there. No surprise with Robert Northway sitting under there, 134s. All very close. Pene, a bit further down the track there in 135, but we go on board with Jordan Pene, our current championship leader. He'll be banking the score. Not sure how many laps these guys have had so far in qualifying. Oh, there's still about 10 minutes to go, and I'm going to jump in and say that maybe it's not so much of a surprise to see Ethan Moore near the top of the standings, right? Because he's done it before, he's got pole position before, and he's one of the few races to actually take out a win uh, as well, which was way back in Nordschleife. So uh, to see him at the top of the qualifying standings so far doesn't surprise me as much as, much as you would think. Mm. We were speaking to uh, Robert Northway, actually, who's currently sitting in second at the moment with a 134-442, just 14 back of Ethan Moore. He said earlier, Brendan, what, what was it? How many hours did he put? Something like 12 hours just this week alone on this circuit, right? I think it, uh, he joked with 52 for a start, and then he backtracked, and he. So I don't know. Some of these guys tell me lots of fibs when we ask them about the hours that these guys are practicing. Uh, but Robert Northway, important thing to note is uh, Simon, he was also telling us he's the current World Championship lap holder. So is it for Project Cars? Yeah, so on both circuits. On this circuit, yeah, on both circuits, in fact, he's he currently holds the PC lap record. So he races on a PC. Uh, he would have been doing that last time uh, when he was at home on his own rig. So currently, it's actually pretty interesting to see. His lap record is a 133.920. Ethan Moore is actually pretty close to that at the moment with a 134.039. So basically the best part of just just under a tenth between uh, Moore and Northway. And Northway, he's actually gone quicker than his his world lap time. So he's just broken his own world record so with a 133.620. So that's three tenths faster than his own world record. So, so we literally just saw a world record get set on this <laughs> track. Insane. That's pretty cool. So understanding that on a, on a global scale, Obviously, there's lots of tracks here, but everybody can choose, and this is a big game. So, you know, once again, Kiwi's doing it large, and uh, <laughs> as he gets a little bit sideways and really jumps those curves. Um, and we're going to touch on jumping curves very shortly for the viewers at home, because we've had, as this championship progresses, we have things that come in. So you've had rain coming, and you've had tyre wear coming. Now, this is, correct me wrong, Matt, this is on the second or third lap, we start to see rain somewhere in this race. That's about six laps in, yeah, right. we start to see rain. So six laps in, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to see these guys are pushing hard. Now, we've got tyre wear. If they push too hard at the start, and you're in the wrong place in the track when it comes into going and getting your, um, your wets on, you're in, you're in trouble because you've caked your tyres, correct? Yeah, no, that's right. And it's also a little bit interesting because from what we saw last time this happened, it seems to be once the first racer hits into that sixth lap, that's when it starts. So if you're half a lap behind someone, then suddenly you're going to be caught out in the rain without being able to pit. I think, I think we might have just got that wrong, Maddie, me and you. It's, uh, ra <laughs> it's race two that we're going to see the rain. So this one's just heavy fog. So it's still about, you still got the tyre wear in there. Now we touched on the curve jumping. Now in these rules, uh, obviously as the championship progresses, you've got the strategies, just like normal motorsport, you've got reverse grids. So now we've also implemented, because of this, this is a game, you, we, we take off most of the penalties, purely because sometimes the games really don't feature for a live audience like yourself sitting at home. So we want to keep it interesting and on the side and sideways like uh, Robert Northway just does there. Check out d and Z, that's sideways. Um, but, <laughs> so, penalties have come in in a new format and that is in the format of protest. So last week we saw that, well, we didn't see this, it was a white screen, uh, but, you know, this is something that you have to deal with in motorsport. We saw Josh Ritchie, he got taken out. Now, whether it was his fault or not, he was livid in his interview. And it was, it was a great view, we were dumbfounded. So now what you can do as a driver is uh, protest to the officials, um, something that, that has come in, and the officials will review it post-event, and you could be seeing, what could you be seeing? Doc Championship points? Yeah, it could be anything from Doc Championship points to uh, if there's a second or two between the races at the end, uh, you could essentially change their position, which would of course Doc Championship points anyway, but uh, it does come down to adding that human eye to the to the system, right? Yeah. Instead of letting a computer take over and uh, sometimes misjudge you and say you deserve a penalty when you really don't, yeah. now we've got human experts in here that can say, all right, look, we've looked at this for 10 hours, we decided that this guy is at fault. Yeah, and that's like real world racing as well. We have that ability at any race meeting in the world, basically, where if you feel like you've been hard done by, you can go up to the 
the, the circuit relations officer, as they call it, the CRO, and say, look, mate, he really, uh, he really <laughs> pissed me off and uh, he did something wrong there and he spun me out and I believe it was his fault. And then what they can do is they can review footage and, and uh, I guess, attribute blame and, and, and penalise these guys appropriately. But one thing to note too, Robert Northway's time, while it is a world record, essentially, it's not counted because the way that the the gameplay is set up is because penalties aren't enabled it doesn't count so unfortunately that time when you go online it won't come up as as his oh, record interesting but thing to point out yeah yeah, yeah but sure. he's actually he's still got the, the lap record anyway yeah. so yeah so so he may have dipped his tires uh over a few corners yep. or so but uh, in the end, it's still a very, very impressive oh, lap course. time. Yeah. Um, but it does come back to that protest system, right? It's not just if someone rear ends you. Mm. It's also if you see someone cutting corners constantly, you can say, look, guys, this guy is obviously not playing by the rules. Yeah. Can we punish him? And it all comes down to the game mechanics as well. As we go on board with Josh Rishi, we'll be able to give you a bit of an explanation as to how it sort of works. So look on the left and right hand side of your screen so there are painted white lines what these guys need to be doing is staying within them as we see josh <laughs> ritchie go completely onto the grass and, and drop both wheels off so what you need basically is when you're completing a lap as long as two wheels are still on the tarmac you're fine but we'll go through the chicane here we'll watch josh's line uh, it's pretty it's pretty bad. good through there yeah. so he managed to keep at least one side of the car within the circuit so if he was to take all four wheels outside of that white line we would in real world motorsport terms consider that to be uh, exceeding track limits and you'd have your time stripped from you i just want to point out uh scott mcqueen 133.56 so he just smashed robert northway's global record so he's our star insurance specialist, uh, I guess we could say feature driver, feature racer today. Yeah, let's call um, him that. You know, let's call him that. And McQueen, he just went out there and proved it. Uh, so, so pretty cool. So on board with Josh Ritchie. Now, last week, uh, it was cool to see with him. He, he got taken out and he, he was livid. But he came back out on track and he really actually showed his true potential and true form. He didn't jump curbs when we were watching him. He stayed within the lines and he didn't take anybody out. So he is a, he's still a very fair uh, clean racer, even though we saw him jump that kid for now. Another thing you can also also get is drive through penalties. We see that quite often in the likes of supercars, etc. Yeah, so last week there was a little bit of conjecture on what they call Discord, which is a, a chat forum for these guys to all communicate on uh, post race and pre race. Mm -hmm. There were perhaps a few suggestions that one driver in particular, who is currently sitting second in the stands at the moment, might have actually jumped the star and got an unfair wow. advantage. Now, that was a big topic post race last week, and the officials in studio did look at that. And we did run view, run through, I should say. And those top ones, we actually sat in the studio as well, and we saw he didn't jump. But there were some people further down that had the slight little wee jump. Now, we're not going to name names because it doesn't matter at this stage. It was only ever so slightly. So we see now McQueen, he's quite happy. He's gone into pit. Parker, he's quite happy. He's gone into pit. And I must say with Josh Ritchie last week, so these are, our, our, I guess, our stars, the top four championship. Josh Ritchie, I said to him, dude, how, how much did you practice this week? And he said, oh, I don't really practice for this one. I was like, why? Well, I, I just didn't. So very confident coming into this, where someone like Jordan Pene, he knows. He has uh, been practicing two to three hours a night, religiously, you know, and if, it, if he gets the championship, dude, it's paid off for him. He's, he's done the hard yards. He deserves it. Versus a lot of these other guys that just haven't done the hard yards. i got to say, when it comes to the race start, I hope we get a nice close-up camera of the start because we cannot see anything right now that's just how heavy the conditions are here with the fog and i remember actually not all that long ago maybe just a couple of years at topo for at bruce mcleod motorsport park the north island during series and, and this is something that happens in real world racing so this is a simulation of course it was a couple of years ago in topo we had one of the races i believe it was two hours and 35 minutes of a three-hour race held under safety car just circulating because it was too foggy Oh, Lord. Actually, I do think I remember that. Is, um, but you do see that a lot. Like, yeah, we've talked about that earlier on, and, and where tracks have this massive downpour and the drainage is crap, well, they'll do an hour under under pace control. I've seen it myself. We organise a motorsport series called D1NZ, and we've had it, and we've unfortunately had to push our events out because the drainage just isn't there in some circuits. You know, It's just the way they're built. So it is what it is. Quite a few people pitting now. Now, why are they pitting, uh, Matt? Why would they be going to pit? Because they're happy and they're done. Like, Look at Scott McQueen. He's just having a chin wag with Pepe. Yeah, he's throwing a few words over to Josh, of course, maybe trying to <laughs> throw his last lap off. Who knows? Uh, but hitting simply, there was only one minute left, right? You, 
probably aren't going to get another lap complete in that time. You can be happy with your, your lap being complete. And as you can see, most of the races finished up right now. And I believe uh, McQueen stayed at the top of uh, qualifying. I mean, no surprise. It's a, mm -hmm. apparently a world record uh, if you forget penalties being a thing. Uh, so he's already impressed us. He's sitting at the top. So uh, he's coming to tonight very confident. He's impressing everyone. He's come off the back of an interview as well, and live TV as well. I mean, we've got to remind the viewers at home that these guys aren't used to being on TV all the time, right? These guys <laughs> are... A lot of them are gamers by heart. Yeah. Some of them love motorsports as well. In fact, I mean, all of them do, but... Uh, you can definitely see the gaming side of things in them too. Yeah, well, there's only one guy that's actually had real life experience in motorsport. We just saw him. He actually uses cushions in his seat. <laughs> and that's uh, the fastest for Pino, which is Louis de Manila. So he's actually raced at, as a Silverstone mm. and he's actually done real life racing. And was it a Lamborghini? Yeah, I think he's, he's done what they call the GT Academy. He actually had his GT Academy hat on just before we cut across. He's got that as his lucky charm, I suppose, in some ways for tonight. He said he's done about 15 laps in a Nissan 370Z, I believe, against guys who are, you know, essentially uh, accomplished racing car drivers. Yep. Uh, you know, he's a guy who's done a bit of karting stuff. He's done a bit of BMW racing before. Nothing properly serious, I suppose, in terms of actual on-track racing, but he knows Silverstone. He's been there. He knows where all the bumps are, where all the curbs are, and he, and he knows uh, how to drive that circuit. So I think Louis will be good once we get to Silverstone. Perhaps not so much at Donington, but he definitely has some confidence coming into tonight. Yeah, I'd be excited to see his his full potential because Louis is someone I've picked as a bit of a an underdog, right? No one's expecting much of him from the start of the competition, but uh, he has. No, <laughs> Maybe that's hard. <laughs> He's I got mean, good in character. terms of, in terms of where he qualified for the championship, yes, right? Yes, he came in, uh, yeah. I believe, seventh or eighth. Right. Uh, so you're already saying he's probably not the favorite, right? right. Uh, that's safe to say. It's not harsh. It's just safe to say. Yeah. But uh, as you can see him flexing around. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. It is. Get this Gotta get comfy, man. Gotta You've got to remember that these guys are in these seats for like the next hour and a half, two hours, and they've got to focus 100%. They've got other four other races next to them. And um, just going to correct you, that's actually Auckland University Car Club yeah. on his hat. Now, uh, yeah. He uh, also belongs to Auckland University. He loves it. There's a passion. So he wanted to make a special shout out to the boys at Auckland University Car Club. So there you go, lads, tuning in. And uh, there we go. There is our qualifying for tonight for Donington Park GP. So there we go. Scott McQueen on top, just six hundreds between him and Robert Northway in second. Jordan Penny a tenth back in P3. Not surprising to see him in the top three positions there. Ethan Moore down in P4. Josh Ritchie in P5. We would have hoped to have maybe seen him a little bit higher up the order. Jake Parker, Louis Di Manila and Michael Robinson rounding out the top eight. So we're not far away from getting this race underway here at Donington Park. It'll be interesting to see who gets the jump, who gets the whole shot into turn one. I think if you're Robert Northway, and you know that you've got pace, you've got one lap pace, you're probably going to be saying, yeah, I, I can do this, I can win this. Mm. All right, should we make a bet? Who's your money on, Matty? Oh, well, look, last week I put it on Josh Ritchie. Oh, well, here we go. We're Let's find live. out. Josh Ritchie's my guy. Yeah, <laughs> Josh Ritchie's your guy. I'm going for Scott McQueen. He's shown some pace at the end of this sort of part of the season. Here we go, Scott McQueen. He's got the lead at the moment. We can't see who has got the whole shot into turn one, but it looks like Scott McQueen's going to take it into turn one. Just behind him, Robert Northway's got Jordan Penny right up his rear bumper, but it looks like McQueen's gone a little bit wide there, and Northway has gone into the lead. So Northway takes the lead into turn one, followed closely by Scott McQueen. Jordan Penny looks on in P3, and Josh Ritchie somehow managed to get up into P4. Ethan Moore has dropped down to P5 at the moment. Jake Parker, Louis Di Manila, and Michael Robinson haven't changed any positions down the order from 6th, 7th, and 8th. So here we go, riding behind Jordan Penny, just keeping an eye on Scott McQueen, who makes a bit of a look down to the inside of Robert Northway. This is an interesting first lap. Good to see these guys racing through the first set of corners relatively cleanly. And it's going to be a big thing to watch, ladies and gentlemen, at home, is things like that. Now, it's, it's the cleanness of their race because penalties are on. So if you spot something at home, you can be like, hashtag officials, LPL, or hashtag officials, Project Cars, and you can say, oh, as you see, just there, no, who was that? That There's was Robert um, Northway. Robert Northway. Taking out a few of the bollards. Right, so these are the sort of things that uh, the drivers, and it's only the drivers that can actually protest this. Um, it's not the game that's going to pick it up. So if a driver feels like it was an unfair advantage, little things like that, I think a lot of the drivers are going to let slide. Yeah, and it's, it's tricky too for these guys because they know what the limitations of the circuit are. They know that they can push the limits. Um, for a guy <laughs> like Robert Northway, Heading into the chicane there, just taking out both of those bollards. 
if you're Scott McQueen sitting in behind, you're probably going to go into the chicane the next time by and take the exact same line as him, knowing that you could probably get away with it. Yeah, just having a little bit of a laugh there as the game has a little mouse come up on screen. We are racing though here, live in Donington GP, right from the uh, Sky Tower, live and we're on board right now with Scott McQueen, Robert Northway out in front and behind him, Jordan Pine. So here we go. Got a bit of a gap here, we'll jump back. Josh Ritchie, you know, at the moment he's, uh, he's sitting not too far away. Now this is a tight technical track, 14 laps, but they're fast laps, Simon. So really, one small mistake, your game's over in this game. Yeah, you've got to be super careful on this circuit because it's what we st we call a, an older style Grand Prix sort of circuit, I suppose. Uh, it only hosted Formula One once in 1993, and that was the European Grand Prix. It's a circuit which rewards guys who are super quick, as we see Josh Ritchie taking the karting sort of uh, approach by getting right up and under that steering wheel. It, it's a circuit where if you go wide and you get onto the grass, it's going to punish you. It's not like these new, what we call tilt drums, where there's masses of concrete and, and, and runoff for you to to go off into if you make a mistake. So if you get onto the grass, you're probably going to end up facing the wrong way. Yeah, like you see in the UAE or the Super Americas, massive big painted mm. runoffs, and you see that also in the uh, Silverstone. And that, that's kind of the staple or the hallmark of the UK for tracks at the yeah. moment. Yeah, well, it's interesting, actually, because we're going to go to Silverstone after this race. It's sort of a bit of a crossover. So Silverstone was initially built around a um, an aerodrome. Right. So that used to be... Uh, Very flat. Wasn't yeah, it's yes. super, super yeah, flat, it's but it still has that, some undulation yeah. in it, of course. Um, but that circuit sort of encompasses both bits. So there's half the circuit is a bit like Donington, right. in that if you go wide, you're going to get punished. Mm -hmm. But then there are other bits, uh, namely the, the revamp, yeah, where the yeah. new pit lane section is, where there's a lot of, Whoa, a lot of runoff. And, and it looks like Northway. Northway. Northway's made a critical mistake, and that's going to allow Every McQueen time. to get up and to leave. Man, that's really surprising from Northway. He's dropped down to P5 now. Just a simple break lock up, it looks like. Hopefully, we've got a bit of a replay as we see Josh Ritchie send oh, it up Pene. the inside of Jordan Penny. A bit of a bump and grind going on. But here we go. McQueen in first, Ritchie in second. Are we going to see a bit of a... Uh, Bump and grind as well, this race progresses. Richie gets a little bit loose out of the big sweeping right-hander, but McQueen, he's legged it. He's a second and a half up ahead, but Northway, he's dropped down to P6. So a horrendous start for Robert Northway, and that is going to ruin his chances of getting a solid haul of points and hopefully catching up to Jordan Penny. Well, here we go. This is the battle that everyone wanted to see this <laughs> week. It's the battle that Josh Richie probably wants as well, so he's got to stay calm. He's coming in here now. Are we going to see some tactics or are we just going to see him play? He, he is a driver that plays clean. So he, uh, McQueen doesn't have a big gap on him. So he's just got to keep consistent. You're only on lap three or 14. And, and we're going to see a, hopefully a good little challenge here for the first. Well, I mean, that's also the thing, right, as well, is that Josh Ritchie, after last week, I mean, yes, he's a fair racer. He's, he's played by the rules. But now, I mean, after, after week five, is that the kind of race that breaks you? Is that where you say, look, if everyone else is doing it, maybe I should do it a little bit too? You know how to play the game a little bit, don't you? you know, well, I, push I think your limits. What, I think what we saw there just with Pine is someone came up, as Pine came up, he tried to close the door. Now, we talk about that. This isn't racing. You're allowed to block. You're allowed to defend your position. So the boys are allowed to do that. Now, if you're coming into an apex and you're way out wide, some would assume that maybe you should check your mirrors and stay out wide rather than cutting in, and we just saw that happen. So that is where the officials have gone, okay, you can protest those sort of things. So the guys know now, in the back of their mind, they've got to keep it fairly clean. Interesting to note on that last lap, McQueen did a 135-1 all on his own, and Josh Ritchie, did a 134.9 while still having to pass Jordan Penny. So McQueen, despite being out front and in clear air, isn't really getting away from Josh Ritchie. But as I say that, Josh Ritchie gets a little bit loose out of the big sweeping right-hander and drops back into the clutches of Jordan Penny, currently in P3. So these next few laps are going to be fairly crucial, I think, in terms of how this race progresses and whether or not Ritchie can catch back up. It seems like this section of the circuit is where Josh Ritchie is really able to get his car onto the anchors, slow it right down and get a really good corner exit, whereas McQueen just doesn't quite seem to be able to maximize his braking and, and looks like he's going quite deep. So we'll see what the lap times were that last time round. McQueen is going to cross the line now and he will record a 134.1. So that's a second quicker than his previous lap. And then McQueen... Oh, sorry, Richie does a slower lap. So yeah, it looks like McQueen maybe There's just Robert behind Northway, yeah, Northway. The replay. He just got out on those rumble, rumble strips and onto the grass. It's a slippery. As soon as you're out there and if you put on, the, you're out. You're done. So um, 
unfortunate for Robert Northway sitting all in position, but now remember he's got the world records. Well, he had the world records to tonight, but um, they won't be official. But uh, he is one to watch. He, he can be really, really fast as we go on board with Jordan Penne. Now, big shout out to uh, the family Wanganui and his brother's uh, family in Ta Tiawa Mutu, I should say. Jordan wanted to have a little shout out into the Whanau in Christchurch. So, uh, Jordan, there you go, and uh, welcome and cheers for tuning in to Jordan's family. It's always great to have uh, the family support as well. Uh, you, you've got uh, people at home watching, and it's not something you'd expect 10 years ago that you'd be cheering for your family members in a video game on live TV. It's a bit bewildering. When you, you know, you're like, <laughs> I, I, I'm surprised for coming from, I guess, a, um, you know, from motorsport and running motorsport events and developing and then coming into these studios. I, you know, people ask, oh, why do you go and commentate a game? I'm like, because it's freaking cool. <laughs> you know, that's actually as fun. I, I sometimes um, lose my uh, a breath when I'm commentating in um, normal motor racing at the tracks. And I've got the same thing here where you actually get so excited and I just let Simon take over because he's got <laughs> a lot more breath in him. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's pretty cool, and, and yes, very, very cool to see a lot of family supporting and um, tuning in as Josh Ritchie now sits in second position. McQueen still ahead, he just can't quite get him. And that will be frustrating him after last week because he will be wanted, will be wanting to get just, you know, you know deep down, he wants to pass him. He yep. wants to get that first position. Definitely, and it looks like that margin is just sort of stabilizing at about one and a half seconds now in the same back to Jordan Penne in P3. Ethan Moore is holding station in P4 at the moment, and it looks like Robert Northway isn't really able to eat into that margin for fourth on the road. Jake Parker and Robinson currently down in sixth and seventh, and Louis Manila looks like maybe he's had a bit of a bad lap, a 137.216 that last time by. So not the best performance for Louis. I invested a little bit of confidence in him, you know, having been to some of these European circuits before, but maybe just doesn't have the confidence himself. Yeah, I, I'm surprised. You know, I, I didn't put any of my money on anybody, but I, I would put my money on Pena. He seems to always come, you know, he had a That's huge easy, upset. Though. Well, he had a huge upset last week. You know, yes, it's easy, but at the same time, he's not at the lead in the moment, neither is Richie. And these two have something to prove this week. Where, where Pena, you know, for him, uh, he's a consistent solid driver. After last week, tonight, yes, of course, my money's on Pena. Hey, if we push him aside, who would I pick? Uh, yeah, you know, I would be picking the Queen as well. Well, my pick, Josh Ritchie, is sitting in P2 right now. Again, like you were saying, he's just trying to crack that lead, trying to get in front of Scott McQueen. After last week, that's all you've got to want to do after that. I mean, luckily for the races, we've chilled out a little bit. There's not as much action and drama uh, so far in the races. Uh, we're only six laps, six laps deep, uh, so just under halfway. And we can't see anything. And that's fantastic. But this is what it's like actually as a spectator in real life motorsport when this sort of thing happens. And we've seen it quite, um, as New Zealand moves into winter, we've seen a lot of this lately and it's uh, been quite chilly. This is just um, standard winter uh, Donington, isn't it? Yeah, it's winter UK. I do not know why you want to live there. Now, interesting to point out, Jordan Pine uh, has been practicing Donington along with Robert Northway and even more. They're the only guys out of this field, out of this eight-man field, who preferred Donington over Silverstone. The rest like Silverstone. So, uh, you know, uh, for someone, Scott M McQueen, he, he's practiced Silverstone a lot more. Well, 10 hours or more, but he lied to me last week when he only said three and clearly had done a lot better than that. So um, right now, the leader, and Josh Ritchie, uh, their favourite track is still to come. Which is apparently Louis' one as well. Which uh, we'll be expecting to see him at least get a little bit better than eighth place on that one. But you're right, Scott McQueen still sitting there, right there in pole position. I feel like right now, you're just relying on the person in front of you to make a mistake. Oh, is, is Josh Ritchie cutting the corner. Yeah. Or that. Now, is this, is this something? <laughs> it's, face, eh? it's like you almost say, oh, did I do that? Yeah, yeah, I did. But hopefully no one, ah, oh, I'm going to be frustrated. Ah, let's go. You know, uh, he almost looked frustrated at himself for whether he was wondering well, why he did so that. So you know, it a mistake. Yeah, well, he, you know, for him, he holds himself in such a high regard in terms of his own um, sportsmanship, I suppose. As we see him go super Ooh. wide into the final corner, he will not be happy with that corner exit and it drops him about half a second. That margin was down to about a second with McQueen and you can see it on the Delta now, eight tenths down on that last lap. But you know, yeah, we're, we're saying with Josh, I don't think he's one to really want to cut corners like yeah. some of these other guys do. Step back a second now. Uh, viewers at home uh, probably wondering, what's a Delta? What's a Delta? So I'm gonna explain it. So a Delta is basically, um, you have a reference lap. Yep. So say your best lap. Yep. And that may be a one minute, 34 flat. Right. So 
So when you're going around the circuit, as we see the Delta for Josh Ritchie that time, he was two tenths in the red. So that right. means by the end of this lap, he could have done a 134.2. Right. So basically, when your Delta is green, that means you're going faster than your best lap. And when your Delta is red, that means you're going slower than your best lap. So you want to always be in the green with your Delta or sort of just within it or just over the red. So ideally, you want to be always in the green and always going faster than your previous lap, but obviously that's not always possible. We can see that margin now is coming down significantly between McQueen and Josh Ritchie as Josh Ritchie clobbers those curbs. He looks across to Jordan Penny to his left and says, oh, how far behind are you? And it looks like Jordan Penny, he's actually dropped back quite a bit now. So he's four seconds adrift of these two in the lead. I think we're getting set up for a grandstand finish here as we just took over the halfway mark here at Donington Park. Well, it's got McQueen's race to lose at the moment. And, uh, you know, you've got to give it to him. When we interviewed him, he, had, he held himself really well. Um, he didn't get dirty on the conversation. He, he just, you know, for someone, he's done quite a bit of sim racing, but, you know, he explained it very well of, of what went on. You know, uh, I was going fast, he was going slow. I went on the inside line, he's been taking wide lines. I felt that was fair. Did Josh Ritchie defend his lane? No, he just didn't know he was there. But uh, Scott McQueen, you know, he's, he's definitely been, I feel, one of the underdogs to come through this championship, you know, only having the game three weeks, uh, driving from Tauranga every week uh, to, to compete in this, um, you know, and not doing a huge amount of practice. You know, his kid's got skills. Northway, though, he's furious. Ooh, he wants Penny. to get ahead. Penny just got super wide out of turn four there and it looks like that margin between Penny and Moore is coming right down now and that's going to allow Northway to get onto the back of this battle so maybe Penny he's overcooked those tyres and Moore is just doing a good enough job keeping those tyres nice and cool in these conditions and is catching Penny really well now let's keep an eye on Moore he gets a little bit loose there out of the fast sweeping right hander and it looks like Penny is maybe maybe just falling back into the clutches of Ethan Moore now. We'll keep an eye on this battle just up ahead of us, looking from on board Robert Northway at the moment. Only a car link in it between third and fourth on the road. Northway just looking on in P5, just maybe looking to pick up the scraps if these guys have a collision. Oh, heavy braking there from Northway as he comes around. Good driving there. Pene now gets a bit sideways, and that's going to lose him some time as well. This could be a good little battle coming up into the 10th and 11th lap if we, um, if we keep this consistent. Yeah, this is an interesting moment in this race too, because if these guys come to blows and Pene drops down the order, then it's advantage McQueen and Richie. And, you know, I'm not saying it's a bad thing if that happened, but it would certainly spice up the championship standings at the moment. So here we go. We're on board with Ethan Moore. They're taking that really nice wide line into turn one. Pene gets a little bit loose. He misses his apex entirely. Maybe just a foot or two too wide of that inside rumble strip. We go on board now with Ethan Moore. That margin is maybe down to all of two tenths now. He takes a really nice line heading into this part of the circuit and maybe Penny just doesn't quite have the legs oh. to keep up. And again, he goes super wide. That's two laps in a row now that Penny has made that mistake. The margin up the front between McQueen and Richie has stabilized to about two seconds now. So we're going to stay on board here with Ethan Moore and Jordan Penny because this is where the battle is at the moment. Now, if you're in Motorsport New Zealand or uh, an official, so to speak, now that was an, uh, looked like an honest mistake. It wasn't a corner-cutting mistake, but would he get penalized for that? It's sort of tricky because on a circuit like this where there's lots of rumble strips and, and the runoff that you're going off into is generally grass, you're probably going to lose more time than you would gaining it. So in that instance, I'd probably say it's an error on the driver's behalf and he didn't gain anything. You can actually see that as well in terms of um, sector splits, whether or not Penny is in the green versus yeah, for sure. uh, more. So in that instance, perhaps not. But let's say we went to Circuit of the Americas in Texas and you went wide out onto the concrete and oh, rejoined, yeah. you know, it'd be a different story because... Oh, man, I've been to that circuit. Amazing circuit. Yeah. So big. Went there for X Games, it was like 220,000 people. Yeah. It was ridiculous, but um, an amazing circuit. And it just blows your mind the amount of money that are put into some of these circuits globally. Oh, for sure. And they were actually looking at redeveloping Donington for a little bit uh, because they were looking actually for a long time to take the British Grand Prix to... Donington. Um, there's a bit of politics that went on in the background and their decision ultimately was to keep it at Silverstone and we have that redevelopment as it looks like Ethan Moore is showing his nose again. Let's see if Penny makes that same mistake. He gets it right this time and actually Ethan Moore by going shallow on that last slip has actually allowed Penny to get away. So 
Yeah, this margin sort of stabilizing a little bit. The, the race not too action-packed at the moment, but I guess we're sort of just waiting for a mistake from one of these leaders, or a little a little error that'll maybe close up these margins. But Ethan Moore is doing a really good job now. He's not really been a standout in this competition. I think he's sort of been one of those guys who's been there or thereabouts, but he's just had one or two bad results that have been a blemish on his calendar. Those, those bad results can lose you a championship, but consistency, and, and he's quite consistent. And you see it time and time again. Is some, some people might not get ever a first, but they may get a second and a third, or a second and a third, or a fourth, and, and that wins championships. Consistency. Oh, 100%, can, you know? yeah. And we've seen that with Northway. Northway had that one round where he finished last. You know, he recorded only 18 points. Yeah, if he hadn't had that really so bad round. That was two round. when he took out everybody. Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah. Raced, uh, yeah. week, yeah. week three or something, yeah, I think. he a big 360 in the air and everyone was yeah. just... Yeah, he had an absolute shocker. who was in the box seat and only recorded 18 points to his name. And now he finds himself in fourth. And he maybe could have had that weekend be a really good weekend for him and be, you know, in, in within reach of someone like Jordan Penny. Well, so he, consistency is fourth. Key. He's fourth, but he's also four points behind second. So uh, if he gets that many points, if, if that weekend went a little bit better for him, then he could be essentially in second place and actually even contesting Jordan Penny. Yeah, and I think, you know, we only have to look at his one lap pace to know that this guy is quick. But it just seems maybe when it comes to the real world racing side of things, he's just not consistent enough. We see him now in P5, he was leading this race. He was odds on to win it because he got the whole shot into turn one and he's quick around the circuit, we know. But as soon as you get into dirty air with these cars, they just seem to be a little bit tricky to pass with. I know with Jasmine be at home going, what are you doing? Which is his partner from Christchurch. So uh, Norfolk actually flies up every, every event, uh, except for uh, last week. Um, and uh, hey, it's quite funny. We we're, were sitting there, we were talking before earlier on about, uh, you know, racing, racing. All he wanted to talk about was the Maroons and State of Origin <laughs> tomorrow. Or tomorrow. A shout out for his mate, isn't it? Yeah, shout out for shout his mate. Shout out for his mate. Well, he's since yeah. Origin. Yep, so we Scott McLean. He's uh, in first position. He's out in front and uh, very consistency. Very consistency. Oh, sorry, it's not uh, <laughs> Michael <laughs> Robinson's partner's name, is Jasmine. I got that wrong. Thank you for writing that down and pointing that out to me, Simon. Apologies, Jasmine. <laughs> as we go there now i guess another thing to point out guys if you ever want to get onto a track and you want to be in the fog and uh, uh be official or be a steward or be a motor uh motorsport official just um get in contact with dev day at the um what is it simon the, the motorsport club motorsport club you know we, we encourage this a lot um we're always in the need for volunteers to stand out on these tracks and protect these races lives now what you don't see in a normal race circuit which is you'd have led lights now you come through this corner on your right somewhere will be led flashing lights and there'll be a marshal as well and they'll be waving flags and using the leds now the races really rely on that a lot in life because you come around here at whatever speed he's doing 180 k's and if there's a car spun out well you're done so uh you know if you guys want to get involved with motorsport get in touch with dev in the motorsport club and uh get out on a track uh, new zealand wide yeah and we need them we need volunteers that is the Constantly. simple matter of the fact you know yep. you know you run d1nz and there's many a weekend where we're sort of asking around going you know guys can you help us out and the reality is is if you're a volunteer you get into the circuit for free you probably get fed too and you get a bit of water as well and you get the best spot in the circuit yeah black 13 of 14 and we are back to ethan moore in a fourth position uh yeah but primarily like uh, on a race day on a circuit like this you could have um 150 volunteers Easily. out on track and you're talking two marshal points and you're talking recovery guys and ambulance drivers it's ridiculous you can imagine right now we've got uh, um what we would call race control in our ear while we're commentating can you imagine 150 people trying to talk to race control yeah it's a it's a tense job that's for sure yeah exactly and and each point on the circuit has its own different issues you know one one person could have a car that's retired and one person could have another car that's in the wall somewhere so you know we've, we've seen it we've yeah. been up in race control you've run race control before and and it's a, it's not an easy job so it's a balancing act you've got to balance okay well that guy is he off is he off the circuit and safe no or there's oil on the line and that's another thing we haven't seen in these sort of motorsport um circumstances is there's been no oil down or there's been no, no none of that side of it and, and those can all throw huge spanners in the works and um and even when you get that oil with kettle off uh you're still going to have a real slippery line for the race mm. cars that are racing through there especially when you're fairly deep so um you see it all the time you know something might happen in nascar and you see those cars come around the bank and they just you know, you've seen amazing shots where they're just drifting and they keep their foot up and around the bank, but, you know, then they're in the wall. Uh, so we're on that 14 of 14. It's been all about McQueen. Scott McQueen, well, he's our, I guess, star insurance specialist, featured player. It's all about him this week and uh, being pretty... Has he been... I guess I've got to ask the harsh question. Has he been clean out on the lead there? 
Yeah, well, he's basically been unchallenged. And, Correct. and I guess that's the unfortunate thing for this race. Josh Ritchie, I think he might have just overcooked his tyres and he's dropped back down about two and a half seconds in arrears of McQueen. Uh, yeah, I suppose McQueen's been clean, but unchallenged. So we haven't really seen how he's sort of acting in traffic. Very McLean indeed. But look, <laughs> Scott, Scott. You were waiting to use that one for a long I, time, weren't you? I actually heard Control say it, so <laughs> I stole it from them. Sorry, guys. But Scott McQueen, if he takes his first place, no matter what, even if Richie gets second, eighth, it doesn't matter. Scott McQueen will take second place in the championship points. So here we go. McQueen's going to cross the line now and take the chicken flag to take his second victory of the season. Josh Ritchie will take P2. Jordan Penny will just hold on to P3 there completing the podium. Ethan Moore in fourth and Robert Northway will round out the top five. Jack Parker takes sixth in a moment. We will see him cross the line. Michael Robinson looking likely to take P7 and Louis Di Manila down in P8. Yeah, Louis actually quite far back. I think he had a bit of an accident, so he may not even make it past the finish line. But, but guys, I think it's all about, like you said, Scott McQueen taking that first place finish. Uh, and important to note is that it's not Jordan Bennett taking the first place as well. So that's going to take a hit to his points. But that said, Jordan Bennett has probably the biggest lead any racer has. Uh, it's something like 50, 60 points ahead. And so he can afford a few third, fourth place finishes. So at the same time, his third place finish is actually not too bad. He's still sitting in first. Well, Louis, that offer's still on the table, $50 to take out Pinay next race. So uh, if you want to do it, you can, and then there's $50 back, back pocket. It'd make the championship a lot more interesting just for that one. Who's, you know? who's paying the $50, <laughs> Brendan? Yeah, yeah. Well, the studio, isn't it? Really, really. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think we're actually, we're, we're going to catch up with some of the races, and I think uh, we've got one standing by, Matty. Yeah, well, of course, we've got the one and only Scott McQueen standing by. So let's see how he's feeling after taking his second win. We're here with Stephen McQueen. Uh, let's just, before we get into the race, in the qualifying, you had the fastest lap in the world on that track. You've got to be buzzing. Oh, it was a bit of luck. I, I got a nice draft on Josh down the straight, so it kind of put me two tenths up and made it easy for me. Awesome. And going into the race, how does it feel to take all of those points in race one and really get off to a cracking start? <laughs> it's, it feels good. It feels good. It was a pretty stressful race, actually. The, the fog's quite hard on the eyes, so I'm just glad for it to be done. Awesome. And are we expecting to see more of the same from you at Silverstone? Uh, not likely. Um, hopefully Rob takes himself out of the race again and I can just stay in the front. So no one's confident. All right, so how are you prepared for the rain that we're going to see at this track? Uh, just practice, practice when the rain comes in, um, learn where the puddles are, make sure I can avoid all them and hopefully stay out of the way of the people that don't. Awesome. Well, best of luck with the next race, mate. Thank you. Well, there we have it again, guys. I mean, that guy's pretty humble, but you can tell he's stoked to pick up a second win. Well, he's, he's stoked, but he's also, uh, I'm seeing a new side to Scott. He want, he, he's got the taste, eh? He, he wants it now. He wants, yeah. he wants the taste to keep coming. He wants those well, championship and those, those podium points. I mean, think about it. The further Robert North, or the worst Robert Northway does, the further away he gets from that third place. And as long as Scott stays in the top three, he's earning money. He's in the money. So uh, you can see here the f uh, final placings for Donington Park with Scott McQueen, of course, in that first place finish. Uh, Josh Ritchie and Jordan Penney in second and third. And then, of course, Ethan Moore impressing us all with that fourth place. Yeah, Robert Northway's position, he's not going to be happy with it, but, you know, uh, uh, he's going to be good. Uh, he's obviously going to... The next track is what he prefers. So you've got Jake Parker, Michael Robinson, and Louis de Manila. Now, look to the right. There's no penalties on at the moment. We will see if we get any protests during the break to see if we uh, actually have anyone saying, hey, he got the Lorna or not. But um, there's, you know, right now, those are your results from that and um, some good championship points for those top three. And, of course, there is one more championship point to give out for the Star Insurance Specialist fastest lap of the race. So we'll find out who got that. Uh, and, of course, Scott McQueen is uh, the world leader, apparently, after that. And there it is again, 133.678. So he's going to earn himself an extra point. Doesn't sound like much, but remember that uh, second, third, and fourth on the championship leaderboard were only four points apart altogether. So mm. that one point could end up being all the difference. Well, if you're at home and you've got Project Cars 2, get on to Donington and see if you can beat that faster slab. I'd be yeah. impressed. Yeah. Uh, make sure that. you do it in the Janetta G55 GT4, of course, because uh, that's how it's going to track that leaderboard. But guys, we'll get into the second race after a short break. But before we do, of course, 
If you want a chance to win the game, get onto Twitter and tweet at Let's Play Live HQ with the hashtag Let's Play, uh, not Let's Play, Project Cars 2 NZ. There it is down on the bottom of the screen somewhere. And of course, tell us what your favorite color on a car is. Uh, these guys think red's the fastest. Definitely. I've said purple is the fastest, uh, with Jordan Penne as my proof. But Scott was just in the lead in a red car. Maybe I've been proven wrong. We win. But we win. If you guys have an opinion, of course, and you think these guys are right, then get on social media and get yourself a chance to win the game. But we will be back after the break to get into the second track, so make sure you don't go anywhere. Like us, you're passionate about cars. At Star Insurance Specialist, we create custom policies for Kiwis with exceptional vehicles. If you own a vintage, classic, performance, project or prestige car, your needs don't fit neatly into a box. We think special and unique cars deserve special and unique insurance. We don't let robots determine policy or price. Get on the road with a custom policy from Star Insurance Specialists. Go to starinsure.co.nz today. Beats that move you. Thanks for sticking through the break with us, guys. We're getting ready to get into Silverstone Grand Prix. You're back with Matt Simon and Brendan to take you through all the action tonight. Guys, what do we think about that first race? I've got to say, pretty clean from everyone. Nothing too exciting apart from that Northway crash. Yeah, I'm putting all my money on Silverstone purely because all the guys have been practicing. It's their favorite track, and it just leans towards better racing. Simon? Yeah, I, I thought that first race was fairly tame. Yeah, uh, kind of a little bit bored to be honest. After um, last week, hey guys, yeah. it was just like, oh, we want to see. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think for for this race, it'll be interesting to see how these guys handle the conditions. I think that's going to be the the spicy sort of part of this race is when we hit sort of that that midway marker. Uh, whether or not you decide to pit early, maybe get the undercut, or whether or not you're that guy who just stays out, a bit like us when we were racing a little bit earlier, and yep. just waiting for that rain to come. If you pit early and you're on wets when it's dry, does that just smoke your tyres? Uh, it's, it's sort of it's a two-way street in some ways, because you can go out there on the wet tyre and wait for the rain to come, and then you've basically got half a lap where you know that you're going to be in the in the good because you're already on the wet tire mm. and you're not going to be losing a lot of time when those guys are still pitting. But obviously the other issue that you face is that you you might cook your tires a little bit. So yeah, it's sort of it's a tricky one and it ultimately does just come down to strategy and what your preference is and whether or not you can manage the tire. All right guys, well, let's take a look at the track itself and the conditions we'll be racing on. So, Simon, tell us all about this beautiful European track. Yep. So, it's the Silverstone Grand Prix, 12 laps around this gorgeous circuit, 5.8 kilometers, 18 turns. The current host of the British Grand Prix since 1987. And in fact, before then, it alternated with Brands Hatch, which 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 we've already raced at before. Redeveloped in 2011 to that 
sort of a longer version of the circuit, which we'll take you through in a moment. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting one. And I think when we get into those wet weather conditions, that'll be when things really sort of sort of change up a bit. Yeah, that's the interesting thing as well. And, you know, I made a bit of a mistake on the first track. That's not where we're seeing the rain. Second track, Silverstone, about six laps in, we're going to see a bit of rain. And you may have noticed uh, in the track conditions is that we can actually see the track. There's not that heavy fog anymore. A bit of heavy cloud, but look, unless you're looking up at the sky, which I don't recommend while you're racing, shouldn't affect you too much. But uh, yes, it's all going to be about that change once we hit into that rain. So uh, the racers will be qualifying right now, again, just like we saw in the first race, to decide that grid order. So as you can see, they're all getting ready to do it now. In fact, some of them are probably doing it right now. Yep, so I think we're about five or so minutes into qualifying here. We can see Josh Ritchie next to him is Jordan Penny, Louis De Manila, and Scott McQueen down the end there. Basically, these guys, are, except for, for Louis, are the main contenders for this championship at the moment. Can't see Robert Northway from this view, but he's down the very end of this room. So eight races here at the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. We're going to cut trackside in a moment now just to see how these guys are getting on. We'll see what the first times are around the circuit. It's a long circuit, 5.8 kilometers. Yeah, so they haven't actually set a time just yet. They'll all be on their outlap, just getting those tires warmed up. So it's interesting to note too that basically if you're going to go out there in the dry conditions and it probably doesn't really mean a heck of a lot because you're going to be racing in the rain in, in no time. Oh, for sure. But you've got to remember that these guys want those pole positions and it's so crucial. Unless we see, uh, I guess, a, a repeat of what we saw earlier on in the championship where Robert Northway just took out everybody, then those pole positions are potentially what are winning these races. Then again, you look back to last week, slipstreaming. We'd never seen it. We need another track for slipstreaming because that was amazing. Seeing slipstreaming come into a play, three wide, and then we're just all using it. It was pretty cool to watch. Interesting to note, that when we get to the end of the season, we're going to be racing at Road America. Right. That circuit has some huge straights. So we could be in for a really thrilling finish to this championship. Is that our final round? It's our I, final I round. I believe round. so. Round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a final race of the season. So that'll be really fascinating to see. Oh, it's also going to be fascinating to see is how these guys adapt to the weather conditions here. If I'm one of these drivers, I'm pissing early, to be honest. And I think that's crucial to be winning this race because we saw that at Hockenheim. Those guys, and even Brands Hatch, you know, these guys put it just a, that fracture too late and you just got bogged down in the water. So I think, yeah, this race will be crucial in terms of maybe deciding the championship. Yeah, and you speak about adapting as well. This is something I want to bring in from more of an esports video game point of view, right? There has been a patch to the game, and what that means is the game's essentially updated to just change a few small things, and usually these are inconsequential. But this time, from what I've heard from the races, is that you're actually going to be a little bit faster in the wet weather so due to a small change to the tires. And yeah. This is something that, uh, I guess, traditional motorsports races don't have to worry about, but well, these guys do. Kind of. It's a bit like, let's say, Michelin, which these guys are, are, are racing with tonight. They have Michelin tires, and let's say Michelin develop a wet tire for the wet conditions. Michelin maybe do some research and say, all right, our Michelin tires can be better. So they make a better tire. It's a bit like that in some ways, isn't it? You know, it's a huge factor. It's a you know we see it with drifting with tread wear and semi slicks versus non semi slicks and the size of tire you can run. All these things make a huge advantage, and it's critical. And that's why a lot of classes like this run a control tire brand. Uh, so you've got a control car, which we're seeing, the control engines, and control tire brands. Now, I would imagine it would be something like a 300 um, size. I, I would have no idea, to be honest, on what tire size is on there. But every single one is on the same. But then when you add in, okay, everyone's on semi slots but then, okay, well, we might go to 310. Well, that's a, just a slight bit more advantage because you've got that extra, you know, 10 mil on the ground. So there's huge, huge changes in that when you actually see it. So the guys, you're saying to me, Matt, they don't actually know yet that they're no, no, they, they do know. Oh, well, they do know now? As long as, as long as they did their homework, they'll know that this update's in the game and they should have adapted to it. And it's something that uh, is across all esports, right? right? The games update all the time in this the beautiful age of the internet. So uh, if you're at the top of your level, you need to be researching these things as soon as they happen. Yeah, for sure. So I just um, heard from the officials that at this stage uh, they've gone through and no one's actually protested from uh, from last round. So we may see something post-review. Someone might take someone out this and go, oh, I'm going to get him off the first race. So, but at this stage, no protests from the races, which is good to see. Um, if you have any thoughts, you can obviously share them on our Facebook page as well. And Twitter. And Twitter. Love, a, love a good hashtag. What's the hashtag? 
hashtag Project Cars 2 NZ if you want to catch our attention. So, uh, again, if you have any thoughts on what should or should not be penalties, then uh, definitely throw us a hashtag and let us know. Well, no surprises there. Up the left-hand side, we bank our first scores, and it's the world leader. He's got the current fastest lap here, and he has set the fastest lap again. It's the Christchurch man, Robert Northway, with a 2 0 9. And uh, from that, Josh Ritchie. Good to see Josh Ritchie up there. Parker, that's uh, very surprising to see Parker up there with a 210. Great for Parker. Will he be able to maintain it? Uh, Josh McQueen, Pine, Manila, Rob and Moore. So uh, not really, obviously, Rob, uh, Mr. Moore, Ethan Moore, I should say, is going to just bank his second lap and he'll try to get something better. Northway has done just one lap, a 209.921. And he's already beaten his world record time again. He did a 2.10.5.2.0 as his world record time around the circuit in this car. Well, I, I went and had a chat with him just between the break, and uh, I said to him, what happened, mate? Are you going to protest him? And he goes, no, I'm protesting myself. Bit up on himself. So he's only got himself to blame. He knows it, but, um, you know, he's, he's quick, and we, we all know that. He's just got to, uh, I hate to say it, but not choke on this race, you know, bank those points. That's so important as well. I mean, we saw how close, uh, you know, the three races were for second, third, and fourth, and... Robert Northway, with that finish, is going to slip further and further behind third place where the money is. So uh, he, he really has to up his performance in this track today because we've seen him win before. He's absolutely a monster on the track. He just needs to keep all of the wheels on the black stuff. And if he can do that, then he is absolutely a top tier racer. Apologies for those that heard it at home. <laughs> it's all right, mate. Everyone sneezes. It happens. But. Yeah, I just want to stress how important it is right now for Robert Northway to get first place or at the very worst a second place finish because if he stops getting in the, in, in the top two, he's going to risk falling just too far away from that third place in the championship leaderboard. So we've just been giving a little bit of an update from race control. So McQueen is officially P2 in the championship standings now after that race win at Donington Park. So currently we ride behind Robert Northway. He seems to have a bit of a habit of taking out bollards. I don't know what it is about him and corner cutting, but it's certainly one of the quickest way around the circuit. So also Josh Ritchie has moved up into third place, five points behind uh, Scott McQueen. So as it stands now, Robert Northway leads this qualifying session by two tenths over Josh Ritchie. Scott McQueen down in P3 and Jake Parker surprisingly setting a good time uh, down in P4 now so Jordan Penner currently in P5 at the moment and we've just heard word from race control that Robert Northway is still down in P4 in the championship standings now 12 points behind third place so that's a crucial moment in this championship so Robert Northway takes another blow in his hunt to get that honeymoon prize for him and his missus. Whoa! Oh, see you later. Like you just cursed him, Simon, as he, look, he uh, returns straight to pit and he knows if he's blowing that lap, he's straight down to the pit to get them um, straight back out there within the uh, qualifying time. Now, how long do they get, Matt, for this qualifying session? Uh, well, looking at the time right at the top, they've got just under five minutes left uh, of the track, so he's still definitely got time to get about two more laps in, as long as he doesn't mess it up one more time. But, uh, of course, uh, I want to bring back to Parker because... Parker is someone that's kind of surprising to see even in the top four, uh, simply because some of the other races that are in that bottom four occasionally shoot up, like Michael Robinson uh, and Ethan Moore. But Jake Parker and Louis are two of the races that don't really shoot up above the fourth positions. And so to see Parker sitting there in the top four for qualifying, it's impressive. Definitely, and he, uh, he said to us earlier on uh, outside of the studio that Silverstone's has won. He, he didn't really bank much else besides that, but um, he's been practicing quite a bit, and he said, look, Silverstone. You know, so uh, he's confident on this track, and that's what we want to see. And our championship leader, the 47-point lead, which is smaller than he had at the start of today, but mm -hmm. still quite large. Coming up, going for his qualifying time, he's still not the lead, uh, leader in this one. Sitting in P5 for uh, that qualifying spot right now. So that's uh, not what we're used to seeing out of Jordan Pennett, but perhaps his, his next lap will uh, change all of that.
can see Ethan Moore's gotten up into P6 now. So that first lap time that he completed was just maybe a little bit of a blemish on the report card for him. He had a really good, strong showing last time out in Donington and actually won a race earlier this season at the Nordschleife. So those longer circuits tend to suit him a little bit more. Some of the, the tighter circuits, whereas somewhere like this, uh, which is quite wide and open in parts, especially through this newer section that we're currently racing on, um, maybe just doesn't suit him so much. So we go on board here with Jordan Penny, currently down in P5 at the moment. And I would say an uncharacteristic P5 Very at the moment because so. we're used to seeing him at least on the first or second row. D any reason that you'd think that he'd be sitting down in that uncharacteristic spot of fifth position, you know? Like I can see him, he's sledging the car out there, he's throwing the car around. Is it just bad day at the office? Maybe just conservation. Maybe so just knows that his position in the championship is fairly safe at the moment and knows that he's got a 47 point lead. You know, when you've got that much of a gap between yourself and the next guy, the next guy has got to be performing insanely well. And that's got to be Scott McQueen. He just chucked his hands up in the air then again um, as he came around the corner. Interesting uh, emotions there coming from Penny. You know, now, would that be anything to do with, it wouldn't be strategy that you want to finish, you, you definitely want to be at the start of the grid. There's no strategy to be in the middle or the, the end of the grid, Simon, for, for, for a racer. Uh, hard to say. Hard to say, really, because you might be sandbagging, knowing that turn one, which we're coming up to now, is fairly tight. Um, Jake Parker is going to head through this quick right-hander, and you can see that if you want to go fast through there, it's basically one line and one line only. You're going to get hung out to dry otherwise, and you might find yourself out in the weeds in some of that extra runoff section of the circuit. So, I don't know. There was a little bit of frustration there, it looked like, a little bit earlier, and, and maybe he's wanting a little bit more out of these tyres and maybe wanting a little bit more time, but obviously not able to find it at the moment. So, interesting to note, Parker has been tied to the pit lane for a moment. Yeah, he saw himself going off, so he pushed it. Now, just to point that out, so they can push escape uh, and explain that they put some straight back in pit lane straight for a fast to get around for another lap. Yeah, it's essentially saying, hey, look, I messed up this lap. Let's teleport back to the start and try it one more time. Again, another little advantage that uh, playing on a computer is actually going to be able to give you. You don't have to drag the car all the way back. Oh, another one that's pushing quite wide there is uh, Josh Ritchie. Yeah, he knows he's, it. He's, he's, no, I'm just practicing. I'm just, you know, he brushes it off. He, he actually sits next to Jordan Penney in the um, in the tournament. So uh, these guys are in pods of four in the um, Speed Nation uh, bucket seats. Now, if someone wants to get a set up for uh, project cars now, uh, you need a PC. Uh, yeah. Obviously, you, you or can. Or PlayStation. Or, or a PlayStation, Xbox. sorry. Okay. Or, a, or an Xbox. Yep. So any one of those three. So for a noob like myself, so one of those three. Uh, and Speed Nation, you can jump onto their website, right? And um, speednation.co.nz. And you did, man, the stuff that's on there. So how intense do you need to go like, to, to, to get out there and play? Oh, look, it's, it's at your own level, right? I mean, you can start at the very basic level. You can play with a PlayStation controller if you really want to. But right. if you want to get to where these guys are, uh, you do want to buy some of the better seats, and it can be a bit of an investment, but when I say that, it's still nothing compared to what uh, you'll, you'd be investing if you wanted to go into traditional motorsports. Uh, I mean, cars are expensive, right? Heck so, yeah. so you can spend a few hundred, maybe a few thousand if you really want a great uh, set simulation setup, uh, and you're still spending so much less than you would be in the real world on traditional motorsports. Uh, yeah. I really know that feeling with a race car that sits in the shed and gets used maybe once every two, three, sometimes even six months. Josh Ritchie, straight back to the uh, pit box. Maybe he's, maybe he's feeling confident in the second position and he's just not right. I'm happy with that. I'm happy. Yeah, look, he's just yep. going to sit back and he's just going to relax and he's like, second position. I'm in the pit. I'm done. One what? minute 24 remaining. He knows he really can't probably bank another lap in that time, so he's happy. We'll see if these guys change up their positioning anymore. Ethan Moore, see if he moves up the leaderboard just a little bit. Uh, won't move anywhere, uh, but the reason I like Josh Ritchie as well, just as a viewer, is just so much you get to see when he's on screen. You get to see exactly how he's feeling by the way he acts. It's great, and it shows so much emotion uh, and passion towards motorsports. I guess another interesting point to point out there, Simon, was um, first, second, and third. Look at the time differences. Yeah, there's only two tenths between first and second at the moment and then another five tenths back to third. Now, guys, I just did a bit of quick math uh, just before. Scott McQueen in P2 at the moment. If he wins every single race from here out, and Jordan Penny finished second in every single race, Jordan Penny would still win the championship. So at this point in time, uh, there's still a fairly sizable gap between 
the first few guys, but McQueen obviously sitting down there in P3 at the moment, Josh Ritchie in P2. Those guys are sort of in the box seat if they want to be challenging Penny for this championship lead, but it doesn't really look like we're seeing any signs of Penny showing any weaknesses, really, of maybe even finishing near the rear of the grid. So I'm going to show you a bit, uh, just some even quicker maths as we finish up our qualifying there, is that uh, the difference between first and third is 10 points. There are five tracks left, including this one, so that's a 50-point differential. So if you want to beat Jordan Penny, you need him to get at least third and you need to get first in every race. Mm. And that's not counting the uh, one point you get for the Star Insurance Specialist fastest lap of each race. Uh, so that may throw a bit of a spanner in the works. But essentially, if you're looking for that first place spot, you want Pene to be getting third or worse every single race. Yep. Yeah, I wonder if any of these drivers know that. We, we did hear, they, they, they're quite a funny bunch. They sit out the back there and they're all quite friendly and they all talk to, talk amongst you. Some of them actually even go to each other's houses to yeah. practice this. So so it's pretty cool to see that. Um, and uh, they all joke about taking p &A out. <laughs> but um, I don't actually know if they will. And so, look, hey, he's even got a fanboy behind him uh, <laughs> as we have Jordan p &A on screen right now. Just taking a bit of a rest. Louis, no fanboy, unfortunately. Oh, I, I'm his fanboy. I'm definitely a Louis fanboy. He's so. got a bit of a, a fan club there too. The Auckland University Car Club, probably watching from home at the moment. Yeah, and uh, Scott McQueen, he's probably the man to beat this race because of the, I guess he's, you know, he's our Star Insurance Specialist Featured Driver. And he's just got a good, uh, well, you know, he's, he's there. He's, he's, he's got a good run on him at the moment. He's kept really good last week and he had really good race. So, uh, you know, uh, reads our number, or I guess reads our colour today, Simon. So uh, Scott McQueen's our man. Look, I'm not going to say anything about that. <laughs> Purple is still the fastest color, but we won't get too much into that because, I mean, look, we've got we've got our uh, grid set up for the race after that qualifying. Uh, and, you know, look, I'm still... I'm going to have to put a bit of my money on McQueen, right? Because McQueen is now the guy to take out Jordan Penner. And Josh Ritchie a little bit to, to an extent. But again, we're still looking at Penner getting third or worse in every single race. The moment he gets second in uh, perhaps even a single race, that's when your hopes are getting drowned a little bit and then you've got to start praying he gets fifth or worse. All right, so we just saw Robert Northway on screen and he was playing with his headphones. And I guess a, a big part of this is these guys actually are, are really um, quite um, particular about their setups as well. You see them in there, they're, they're modifying the chairs, the way they set the, the, the sims up is uh, very particular. Now, another one, Jake Parker, did, where did he place in the end? Did he get fifth in position in the qualifying? Uh, I think it was a little bit further down the fourth. order. He was fourth, I think. Oh, oh, was he fourth? What oh, okay. a result Impressive. for Jake Parker. Even more sitting there. He doesn't actually probably know we're on camera at the moment. He's just like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Some very <laughs> interesting things. <laughs> <laughs> Ethan, focus. <laughs> yes. So uh, Donington was actually his favourite track uh, this week and uh, no practice. Didn't have time to practice this week. So, you know, but he's got, uh, I think it was, he was saying 20 or 25 years practice in sim racing. So, you know, uh, for that, it's it's, uh, it's pretty impressive. Uh, Josh Ritchie, the one that, the man that shows the emotion the most. Now, if you want an ambassador for for your, for your brand, he'd be a great one <laughs> because he loves to talk to the camera. I saw him just actually uh, earlier doing an interview on Radio Live, I think it was. Uh, so, be coming up soon. So, uh, these guys are getting real famous. Yeah, definitely tune into Radio Live. Esports, uh, everyone wants a piece of that pie, uh, it seems like, right now. And so uh, check out Josh Ritchie on that a little bit later on in the week. But uh, Robert Northway sitting up there in the pole position. Josh Ritchie right behind him. Scott McQueen, the man to, uh, let's call him the penny killer right now. Uh, but he's not there just yet. Uh, and then Jake Parker, I think, is the big one in that fourth place. Yeah, surprise again to see Jordan Penny down in P5, Louis de Manila. Not super surprising to see him down in P6. Ethan Moore down in P7, unfortunately, and Michael Robinson rounding out the top eight. So a really poor showing from Michael Robinson, actually, a 211-353, so the only guy down there in the 211 bracket. Robert Northway, a 209-357, that beats his own world record. So an impressive time for him. So, uh, yeah, we should be just about ready to go racing. Now, yep. the question I guess we've got to ask ourselves is, can Robert Northway keep it together? You know, if you can keep it together, he's got this race. He's mm. fast. He just, for some reason, chucks it away every single time. That's right. And, and like, as much as we're talking about Scott McQueen being the one to take out first, potentially, uh, Robert Northway, again, if he pulls himself together, he could potentially be that man too. He's not that far behind. Again, you're going to have to pray for Penny to lose for sure. even harder. But at the same time, Northway is still in contention to get up there. His main goal for now, though, should be getting into that top three. 
Look at the nerves here from Josh Ritchie. You know, he's, he's jittering around. They know that this is uh, there's money on the line. There's a championship on the line at the moment. $10,000 prize pool as we're here. We're sitting live in Sky Tower, about to go live. <laughs> yeah, we can see you. Yes, we can <laughs> see you, Josh. And the guys, we actually have mics in these, so if they start getting really rowdy or if, if something big yes. happens, we'll actually tune yeah, into their mics. Yeah, more like. <laughs> yeah, no, Josh Ritchie is incredibly loud. We're ready to go into the race right now. Let's go on to Silverstone. So here we go, trackside now, eight races, the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. Robert Northway on pole position. Let's see who gets the better jump of the two drivers. It looks like Northway gets away cleanly. They all head too wide into turn one. We could see a little bit of drama, but it looks like Northway, he's going to take the lead into turn one cleanly. Richie slots in behind in P3. Scott McQueen gets a really good start there. So Richie, he's dropped back down to P3 now. Jordan Penny is fighting Jake Parker to get into fourth at the moment. McQueen goes wide out of turn four and that's going to give Josh Ritchie a good run perhaps out of this hairpin. So we ride on board here with Josh Ritchie in P3 at the moment. Robert Northway, he's just legged it on these guys and has really taken the advantage from pole position. Bit of drama here behind. It looks like Jack Parker is battling with Louis de Manila even and Penny has dropped right back down to P8 now. So a bit of a surprise to see Louis up there and Jordan Penny so far down the order. So Jack Parker currently now in P4, hard pushed by Louis de Manila in P5. But what's happened to Jordan? Jordan's down in eight. That's a shocking start. Look, if, you, if you're Northway, if you're McQueen, if you're Richie, you are stoked. You are so excited to see Penne sitting there in P8, but the race is not over yet. In fact, we are just beginning. Penne has shown he can catch up. So a really good start there by Louis de Manila as he gets super wide through what used to be turn one on Silverstone here. Looks like Jake Parker also getting a little bit wide there as we head into Maggots and Beckett's. This is a super fast part of the circuit and it really matters if you miss the apexes here as we see Jake Parker go just a little bit wide. That's kind of compromised his line into Beckett's now as we watch up ahead. McQueen fending off Richie. This is the battle that we wanted to see all night. Are we going to see a bit of banging and barging going on up ahead here? Josh Richie's tucked up to the rear wing. He's going to send it down the inside. There he goes, shows the nose. McQueen gives him plenty of space this time round. Do you think he maybe gave him too much space? He uh, did, yeah, he definitely let him pass and that now puts the pressure straight back onto Josh Ritchie and now he can chase him down and now it's all on Josh Ritchie now. As if Josh Ritchie can get away from Robert Northway or pass Robert Northway, well then he's in a good position. But Robert Northway's quick and he's got clean air and if he's got clean air and he just doesn't make a mistake, then uh, he's going to be hard to catch. But uh, as you can see now, Scott McQueen flips it. Pressure's all on you, Richie. So he's just sitting there and he knows as long as he sits there, sits there, all he needs to worry about is something like this with a slight mistake from Josh Richie as he gets wet and wild. Or wild, I should, wide, I should say, as he comes down now, Zard. Scott McQueen going to have a look on the inside line. So we oh. go. Looks like Richie goes a little bit defensive. McQueen, another nudge up the rear end. He's going to send it down the inside and just gives Richie a bit of hip and shoulder on the way through. Josh Richie will not be a happy man after that. We go on board now with Josh Richie currently in P3. He's right up behind McQueen now for P2 here. They go side by side down the straight and it looks like Richie's going to take that position straight back if he's lucky. Can McQueen hang around the outside and take the inside into the next set of corners? Not quite this time and it looks like we might be seeing a little bit of rain coming already here on lap two. You know, I guess the important thing to do is look behind them as well. You've got Richie, you've got McQueen straight behind him there. You've got Parker and Manila of all drivers that could be you know, contending a little battle here and Josh Ritchie and uh, Scott McQueen are obviously thinking just about their battle and they're not watching Jake Parker and Manila right behind them. So oh. if they get too much in a tussle, Parker and Manila are going to be straight there to pit out. For well, sure. They could be, could be talking to Manila down there as he goes a bit wide. But Looks like McQueen just got a little bit wide there out of what used to be turn one here at the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. And that's allowed Jake Parker to get up under the rear wing of McQueen. Now, we're seeing a few drops of rain now on only lap two. By lap three, we could see a proper downpour. We don't really know when it's going to come, but it could come soon. There we go. Bit of rain coming now on the cameras. If I'm Penny, I'm pitting. Yeah. If, if I'm on this race, I'm pitting. I tried to drive this track when it was when I uh, had slicks on, and it was just impossible. If you're out there and it's wet, it's, you're done. So, so who goes go. in? Penny, he's, he's gone. In. 
No, that's Northway. So Northway North up for the lead. He's gone for the pit. So he's going to try and get the undercut now from the lead. Let's see, is that going to pay off? And it looks like McQueen goes a little bit wide there into the chicane, heading onto the front straight. Now let's see who's pitted. So Northway goes into the pits. Manila goes into the pits. Robinson goes into the pits. It looks like Penny as well and more. So about just over half of the field have all gone into the pits. Josh Ritchie leads from McQueen and Parker. So it's just these three guys who have opted to stay out. Was that a tease from the rain? There is no rain on our screen. Well, there's, there's a few a, drops here and there. There's a tease from the game here. Like, was it a bit of a bit of a trick? Well, see, this is the thing, right? If you're undercutting, you're hoping that it is going to chuck down right now. This is the moment in the race where if you have pitted, you want the rain to be really falling hard. And we can see it already now on Jake Parker's windscreen. The rain is starting to fall now. Josh Ritchie and Scott McQueen may have already made their bet here on lap three at the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. They've got to hope that it doesn't get too wet here now and that they can keep the temperature in the tyres. Otherwise, they're going to find themselves slipping and sliding all over the circuit by the time they get to the end of lap three. Well, one of the, well, obviously the drivers pointed out as well as uh, we, we went for that interview with Scott McQueen earlier on. He pointed out learning where the puddles are, learning where it is. Now we go past the old pits as we're coming close to the uh, uh, to the round to get back to the front straight. I think they've, these guys may have played it safe. But yeah. just, it just just hasn't rained enough yet to uh, really damage them. They might have pulled it off here, and this is another thing we talked about a little bit earlier. If those guys who have gone out onto the wet tyres have worked with the undercut they could be leaving it on them. But the problem is at the moment that it's not properly raining. Yeah, it's so 30, they've already 37 pitted. seconds down right now. So it's going to come down to this bit. Question is, well, these guys must go in for this bit. They must know that. Uh, is this a, this is a big one. Uh, it's, it's super tricky because, you know, when we were racing earlier in the day, it just it chucked it down almost immediately. So, I mean, the game's teasing us. It's almost like it's trying to say, Hey, I'm going to play with Ooh, you. Oh, no, that Ooh. looks greasy now. That looks super greasy now out on track. McQueen yeah. goes super wide, and we can already see a little bit of spray coming off the rear wheels of Richie, and rightly so, he heads for the pit lane. So these guys are going to box now, put on some wet tyres, and rain. hopefully get the lead back. Right, that is 40 some... seconds difference, 40 seconds difference, 39. So here we go, 38. So here we go. Down on the left-hand side of your screen, ladies and gentlemen, you can see the gap here. Now, this pit doesn't go well for them. What's the deal with the pitting, Matty? Is it, is it, um, it's obviously all standard. They don't have anything to do with it. So it's just yeah, it's how essentially, fast you can get in and how fast you can get out. Yeah, it's essentially you go in, you click what you want, and the game will, you know, it, it'll have a certain amount of time to do those things, and you'll have to wait, and then essentially you get out. It, it, it's like a real race, except you don't have to worry about anyone messing up. Right, so on the right-hand side of your screen, you can see the guys pitted. You can see the chasers coming along. On the left-hand side of your screen, you can see the times. I think this is going to work out perfectly for these guys who have just made it into the pit lane. They spent more time out on the slick tire and were able to maximize the time spent in the best conditions. And Northway, he's Not gone. He's half spun. He's gone out of what could have been the race lead. And it looks like the guys in the pit lane are moving now. So Richie McQueen and Parker may have played the master stroke now. Northway somehow manages to hold on to P3 effectively on the road. But those guys out in front who are in the pit lane have taken the lead. Josh Ritchie currently leads this race, followed by McQueen and Parker. It's not worked out for these guys who pitted one lap earlier than them. And Northway, who was our race leader, is now in P4. So a masterstroke by those guys who stayed up just that one extra lap. Northway gets caught out by the slippery conditions here at Silverstone. As we see Louis Di Manila going super defensive. And Northway spun again. There's oh. more drama. Manila crashed and that's going to open the door for Jordan Pennier to slot straight in between them and get into P4. So we kind of didn't want to see Jordan up the order, the luck, but he, there he is. He's into P4. He's managed to capitalize on the dramas of Northway. And like we said, Northway has gone from P1 to P8 in the space of half a lap. A shocking way to make the halfway point in this race. And these guys at the top, Richie and McQueen, they were praying for Penny to do as worse as possible. And because of that crash, he's now slipped up to P4 and now has the potential to go even further ahead. But look, these are the sort of conditions that can sort of play into the hands of oh. some of the guys down the order now because it's super slippery. You don't want to be getting out onto the extra turf and onto that, you know, the, the unused tarmac because there's no grip out there. These guys have got to be super careful in these conditions. We obviously know that the wet tires work better in the rain now, but just how good is another question. These guys are in new territory now as we see 
Ritchie currently leading the race in relatively mild wet conditions at the moment. McQueen in P2 and Parker, a standout performer currently in P3. He'll be hoping that those guys like Penny can't catch him at the moment, but the margins are substantial. But we've got a good battle here for the lead. Josh Ritchie just holding on to the lead with McQueen in P2, just nine tenths behind. Now you've got to point out there the, the, the difference in between Parker and McQueen. It was 11 seconds, now it's six seconds. There was a big difference here between, um, oh, what has happened here? Pene, Pene has dropped to six. Oh, maybe a bit of a mistake there. Robinson is now in fourth and Moore is in fifth. Mistake, can we go back there? Can we have a look? Can we look at the back of the, back of the field? Pene, Moore, Robinson, something's going on there. So we go, we go on board with Jordan Pennon now, just going side by side there. Is this where the mistake was? We can't quite tell at the moment, so we'll just stay here for the moment. They hit, oh, so this is the crash actually yeah. from a little bit earlier. So there we go, Louis de Manila, unaware to what was happening up ahead. Just straight through the middle of them. <laughs> Northway just spins on it. his own. So no, we've seen that before. Zone. Now, for some reason under that though, Pene was up to fourth position and he's dropped right down to seventh position now. He's gone again. Manila makes it up. Moore makes it up. Robinson. Parker, though. Where has Parker come from this week? I think more importantly, though, Northway and Penny have gone into the pit lane again. This is this is super uncharacteristic. I think they might have made a mistake. Before the race, we talked about it before we came on air. You have to set up your pit, your pit strategy, right? Right. And when you do that, you've got to choose whether or not you go into wet or slick tyres. Did they I choose? Think no. They might have made the mistake of choosing slick tyres or just forgetting entirely to put on the wet tyres. So Penne and Northway are both now in 7th and 8th. And maybe that was why we saw Northway spin out again. We'll have to wait until after this race to maybe get an interview with these two drivers, two key championship contenders who we now find in 7th and 8th respectively. One thing I've noticed is Josh Ritchie's done that a couple times now. He's gone really wide and he's pushed it wide where uh, Scott McQueen, he followed in the first time, but the second time he didn't follow him. Now, if we see that again from Josh Ritchie, if he pushes wide again and Scott McQueen doesn't, that could open a door for a protest because he's taken a way faster line out there. It is slipperier, but it's a way faster line and it just allows him to take that wide, wide angle. So uh, this is the battle for first and second. Josh Ritchie, he's going to be all smiles at the moment. Not sure if we can get in, I guess what you call an in-car with him. Scott <laughs> McQueen is right there though. And this will be a battle, 0.5. It's a very, very small margin. Parker though, great for him. And he's got clean air at the moment. All he's got to do is stay consistent. He's got no one out in front that he has to challenge because he's just probably too far away. But he's well ahead of anyone behind him. Ten seconds ahead of anyone behind him. Richie and McQueen that last time by did basically identical lap times. Richie did a three minute one and McQueen did a three minute one. So this time by I think we'll see the advantage swing in favour of McQueen. We'll see as they tick over the timing beacon. Who's quicker that time by? So Richie does a 2.21.745. McQueen does a 2.21.323. So he eats about half a second into the lead now. So it looks like maybe these conditions are working in favour of McQueen. Richie not so much, just taking a bit of a defensive line, going a lot shallower onto the corner entry. We know that McQueen is sort of uh, one of those guys who likes to go shallow on entry, but now we're seeing the opposite now where, uh, where Richie is actually taking an alternative racing line. We've got to watch these guys too. There are puddles starting to form out on the circuit, yeah. and you've got to be careful that you don't hit them. Well, if you hit those puddles, we've seen it time and time again, you just aquaplane off or you just spear off. You, you just lose the grip. Okay, we come through here. McQueen takes a little look on the inside now. The pressure's on Josh Ritchie. It's all about Josh Ritchie maintaining consistency here and not pushing too hard and just watching his rear vision mirror as McQueen takes a little look on the inside. We're lap six of ten, four laps to go as Josh Ritchie pushes it out. Now staying off the rumble strips is also really important. Big puddle on the right there. So that's what you really got to watch for, ladies and gentlemen. If you're sitting at home, watch for the puddles and if the guys hit them in the next lap, it's all done. And that's maybe what Penny is still sitting in the pits. Uh, he's, he's, out he's out now. He's managed to get right. out onto the circuit, but his last lap was a three minute eight, so. He's last. Yeah. What more just... would the guys want for a championship mix up? He's actually Pene. retired. Wow. He's jumped out of the race. He knows that he's done for. And if your theory is correct, that he put, just simply put on the wrong tires, then I, I almost can't blame him. I mean, that's a 
that, that's an infuriating, a small mistake that I can cost you a championship. I I'm hearing all sorts of all, all sorts of murmurs over the race radio in the in the in our air at the moment that it could be something else. It's an going issue on, of some issue. sort. So maybe sure if it's maybe uh, a wheel failure or something. Yeah, uh, hard it, to know. But those are the sort of things that you've got to take into account when you start racing. You know. Oh, here we go. Scott McQueen's going to send it down the inside of Josh Ritchie. Shows the nose, but doesn't quite manage to get alongside the race leader. And it looks like right. Richie is just holding on here. We're going to head into the final chicane here, into club, and let's see. You know, we've only got basically four laps to go now. Can Scott McQueen finally get past and make a real indent on Penny's championship lead? Now, just remember, on the odd chance that these two take each other out, we're going to see Parker for his first ever podium on oh, the top step. If, if you're Richie, and you know that McQueen is quicker than you, you're probably not going to let him pass anyway because Richie has got the fire in his belly tonight. He knows what's happened in the past few races, and I wouldn't be surprised if Josh Richie really tries to go defensive. Maybe flew a few blocking tactics as they head into the arena now and down into Brooklyn. This is a super fast part of the circuit. All that Scott McQueen needs to do right here is get a good exit, and it looks like... Oh, it looks like... That was Penne on I the side of the... Yeah. Side of the road. Penny's retired, Maybe this is so. like real motorsport where his car just broke down, you know? <laughs> Let's just take it as that. He blew a diff. There we oh. go. It happens in drifting all the time. Just to, just to clarify to everyone at home that hasn't been watching every episode, is that uh, damage for your cars is visually turned on. However, it won't affect the performance. So you can smash up Josh Ritchie's car all you like, but it's still going to work just as good, even if it's not as pretty. Now, the pressure right now is all about Josh Ritchie having it. Scott McQueen sitting in the back there. And Scott McQueen's going to be very confident and know that he doesn't really want to go in there and, and he's definitely not going to intentionally spin him out. But he's also not going to want to go in there and take him out. So he's been very careful about his manoeuvres because he knows Josh Ritchie is a very vocal player. And if he feels it was uh, unjustified, then you're going to hear it. Now, one place that Josh Ritchie has been pushing, he's been pushing out wide on one of these corners. We'll point it out when we see it. And when that happens, that's where Scott McQueen will take a look. Interesting to note, Northway has also retired from this race as well. So Penne and Northway have both retired from this race. That's the first time we've seen any proper retirements all season. So we'll look and find out what happened after this race and see what issues have sort of come up during this race. It's the first time we've probably seen any major issues in this championship. The only issue I think we had was in the very first race where we had one of the cars not able to make the start. But other than that, these guys haven't had too many issues. And it looks like Scott McQueen is really starting to latch onto the back of Josh Ritchie in the lead now. So we'll keep an eye on this battle. This is where the focus is at the moment. Parker down in P3 is 11 seconds back of these guys now. And Robinson also down in P4 as well behind. There's a good battle emerging for fifth overall. It looks like Robinson and Moore are battling hard. The margin between them is less than a second last time by. With three laps to go, Scott McQueen is chasing down Josh Ritchie for the race win. Can McQueen get past Ritchie and maybe make a proper assault on Jordan Penny's championship lead? The thing is, either of them can make that assault right now. They're both within 50 points uh, of uh, Jordan Penny. So he takes a look. Oh, here oh, we go. On McQueen. the inside, can he execute it? There's a puddle on the right-hand side. We go wide. and now tries to close the door. He tries to block Josh Ritchie out, and he defends. Oh, we can't quite see. Where is Josh Ritchie? He gets it. So Ritchie's going to just slot behind oh. McQueen here. <laughs> and it looks like as we head down into Brooklyn's, McQueen is going to have to defend hard and hope that Richie can't quite get past. Richie has the inside that line. Can McQueen hang around the outside? You have the inside for the next corner. But Richie yeah. shuts the door on him, says, no way, Jose. You ain't getting past tonight. Josh Richie currently leading this race now. McQueen, he thought he had it in the bag there for a second, but Josh Richie, he played the tactics. That's what you got to do. You want to do the up and under and get that lead back. So three laps to go here at the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. We've got to head into turn nine, Cops Corner. Can McQueen hopefully send it up the inside on what is the final stanza of this race? It's so important as well. Both of these races want to lock in that position, at least in the top three. But with this win here, they are seriously going to be able to contend for that top position. Jordan Pene not only finishing last, but not even finishing the race is going to earn him a minimum amount of points, which means both of these guys will want to get that first well, place. See, see, here's an interesting thing too, right? His name has just dropped off the leaderboard, so he won't record any points. 
that's that's a big issue because that's they'll, a DNF. They'll, they'll that's be added no by race control later. So the, uh, no matter what, I'm pretty sure you get points for seven for eight. Correct? Well, but to finish, you got to get points, right? You got to get the points if you finish, right? If you don't finish, you well, don't I, get points. I, I guess it comes back to: is it a mechanical fault? Is it a sim fault? You know, we don't know that. Maybe he got angry with Josh Ritchie sitting right next to him, <laughs> and finally got over it and walked out. And we will find out after this happens. We might even try to get him on an interview. But right now, we are on lap eight of ten here at Silverstone, and. You've got to give it to these guys. Consistency. Last week, they consistently fought each other. This week, they're consistently fighting each other. And they're not dirty fighting each other as well. So they're very evenly part in their driving skill. Yeah, it's good to see these guys. I guess you could say two fairly evenly matched drivers in this championship fighting hard for Whoa. the race lead as McQueen goes super wide out of Term 1 here at Silverstone. And that's allowed Richie to just get away now, establish a half-second lead. Still goes a little bit defensive as McQueen. He looks like maybe he's pushing just a little bit too hard in these conditions. Richie doing the best he can to use the optimal racing line here at the Silverstone Grand Prix. McQueen has just dropped back now. There's seven tenths between he and Richie Parker, 11 seconds back. Robinson, another 20. So Robinson and Moore still engaged in a fairly good battle there, but we're not really focused on that at the moment because the real race here is Scott McQueen and Josh Ritchie. This is crucial in how we decide this championship heading in to the final four races. That nine of 10. I've got a feeling McQueen's going to have a look and it's going to it's going to get interesting on these last laps. Now, if it gets interesting, Parker will get his first position, but if not, it's one of these two, Scott McQueen and Josh Ritchie, very nice racing, very good racing from Josh Ritchie too. He's managed to get a little bit of a gap out there on Scott McQueen, but he's going to go heavy on the brakes and he's going to try to take him as he comes off the front straight. So here we go, into Cops Corner. We're going to head down towards Ooh. Maggots and McQueen just a little bit wide there onto the grass there. Yeah, Richie, Richie wide. equally wide out onto the AstroTurf. That's not going to help either of these guys. Heading into Maggots and Beckett's turn 11, 12, 13 and 14. Down the hangar straight they'll go any moment now and that is where McQueen has to make a move because you want to be sitting under the rear wing and getting that slipstream. Even in these conditions, you can still get it and you can just punch that hole in the air. Richie ahead and McQueen can just sit under his rear wing and hopefully have less drag over the top of his car. So we'll watch the margin now. It's just stabilizing at three tenths. Can McQueen, with just over a lap to go, take the win here? Best frenemies fighting for that first place spot here. Silverstone Park and honestly I don't think we could have asked for a better top two battle between these two guys we've somehow taken Pena out of the equation entirely and now we're getting a seriously good little battle between these two guys even Northway who uh, while inconsistent can definitely prove a beast for these guys to beat is also out of the equation so I'd love to see as we move into the final lap which one of these two races is going to come out on top so here we go it's the final lap here at the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. McQueen on the attack now. Richie goes defensive into turn three now. Can he get the up and under on him? Richie goes wide a little bit. McQueen, he's going to hopefully dip around the inside of him. And McQueen is actually Ooh. not able to get on the inside. Richie played that incredibly well. Dead. It looked like Richie had compromised his own line by going too defensive. But this is going to open the opportunity for McQueen to maybe get the slipstream and get the pass around the outside. We haven't seen this tactic before when he has gone around the outside. Here we go into Brooklyn's. Richie's gonna hang him out to dry. McQueen can't quite get the position done now. And Richie is doing everything in his might to defend from Scott McQueen now. They bump bumpers. McQueen is doing a fantastic job here to try and take the lead of Josh Richie. Josh Richie doing a fantastic job to defend. So here we go. We're into the final half of the circuit. Only a few corners remaining realistically. They head into Cop's corner. Can McQueen send it down the inside? No, he can't. It's Linus turn through this corner. It looks like McQueen might have to wait for a mistake by Richie on this last lap, but it looks like Richie's got it in the bag for the time being. You gotta say what consistent driving here from Josh Ritchie. It really shows these guys if you want good sim racing, well, you've got it right now. No big mistakes from either driver, no massive curve jumping, no over the chicanes. These guys have had a battle for the last four laps, in and out. You've seen it last week, you've seen it this week. Championship points are going to get all muddled up now because Pene is down the bottom. In the week, we will find out what happened with those two drivers. But right now, it is all about Josh Ritchie. Look at him, he knows yeah, he wants he it. He knows it, he wants that money. He's got to not money. make the mistake. 
So here Scott we go. Scott McQueen in the background. Four corners to go. Is Josh Ritchie just going to have a little bit of a distraction there? Oh, Scott McQueen is right under his rear wing. Now they head down to Vale and into club. Richie goes defensive. Scott McQueen goes around the outside. Can he hold it there? Not quite. He gives him a bit of a nudge into the final corner now. Is there going to be more drama now? McQueen, he's going to try and send it down the inside. But Richie, he's going to hold on to the lead. And here we go on to the front straight now. Josh Ritchie takes victory in emphatic fashion here oh, at the Silverstone Scott Grand Prix. McQueen. He is absolutely stoked. And ladies, Finally. ladies and gentlemen, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first first place that Josh Ritchie Look has taken. Look at how happy he is. He's probably in tears now. Look at him. He just can't believe it. He gets up and goes, hopefully giving uh, McQueen a bit of a handshake there onto the final corner. Now we watch. It looks like Robinson can't quite get past Moore for fourth position there. So a valiant effort there from Moore to get P4. Robinson takes P5 and Louis de Manila rounds out the top six. But the big talking point, Pene. Penne he, and Northway gone. as well is a big one, but Penne is probably the most impactful yeah. one. We'll find out what happened a little bit later on. But look, honestly, if you're Josh Ritchie, I mean, apart from Scott McQueen getting kicked out of the race too, this is the best scenario. Your first first place finish, and that's the best way you can catch up to Jordan Penne if he doesn't earn any points at all. Fantastic result for him tonight. Uh, he will be fizzing, and I'm pretty sure we're going to get an interview with him very shortly. Uh, it's going to be completely different to the interview we got last week, that's for sure. Oh, yes. But what amazing racing, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it takes a lot of skill. When you're in the wet um, on that track, it's just, uh, I've driven it, I, I, I completely suck. But these guys, to oh, have that battle back and forth, back and forth, uh, Beautiful. Can't wait to watch the replay. Absolutely. But what I can't wait for is to see how Josh Ritchie is feeling after his first win of the championship. So let's see how he's feeling right this very second. We're here with Josh Ritchie. Mate, congratulations on the result. How are you feeling? Ecstatic, mate. It's been, it took me six rounds. Uh, longest winless streak since the Auckland Blues. But hey, I finally managed to achieve it, man. So oh, you have no idea how ecstatic I am, man. Fantastic. And we saw with those changing conditions today, you chose to stay out before pitting early. What made you make that decision? Well, I knew in the end um, that the rain wasn't going to come down immediately. I knew that I had to change onto the slick tyres once the rain really took effect of the track. But at the time, I was planning to pit, but it didn't quite eventuate. So I thought, stay out another lap. I'm pretty sure that he's going to be coming in handy. Nick, minute. Um, <laughs> I'm about 10 seconds ahead of Rob and, uh, and Co. So... Definitely good decision in the end, wasn't it? Yeah, well done. And how did you cope on those slicks with those changing conditions, that lap? It wasn't too bad, actually. Toward the end of the lap, it did start to uh, get a bit skatey, but I was aware of what it would be like going into that uh, into that last corner. So, no, I mean, that in the end is why... One of the reasons why I did succeed today was because I managed to master the strategy. So, yeah, just absolutely over the moon with it. Well, great, mate, and best of luck for next week. Look, I honestly can't think of a man more deserving of that win right now. Like, he was stoked to get to that interview, to get to go over and give Scott McQueen the handshake. Josh Ritchie has earned his win. And, of course, it's right after I don't back him for the race. <laughs> so, <laughs> look, you can thank me for that one a little bit later, Josh. But, look, guys, we've got the results from the race. So let's take a look at that and see exactly where everyone finished, of course. Well, the races that did finish. Uh, Josh Ritchie sitting up there, of course, in that first place. Scott McQueen right on his tail. Jake Parker as well. We've got a shout out to this guy, third place. Ethan Moore as well coming up too. Rounding it out with Michael Robinson, Louis de Manila, And, well, Jordan Penn 8 did not quite manage to go over the finish line, and neither did Robert Northway. So they will not be, uh, unfortunately, earning those points, I believe. Uh, but, however, we'll learn a little bit more about that story as the week goes on. And... We'll also uh, be able to get a bit of a look at the Star Insurance Specialist fastest lap of the race. It's going to be an extra point for us to have a look at. And remember, guys, I mean, if you're trying to catch someone who's 50 points ahead of you, there's a few points between the next three. These points matter. So let's take a look at who actually managed to pick that one up. Jake wow. Parker. Shout out to that man. Someone who Good just effort. has been a little bit underspoken throughout the entire championship, suddenly appears out of nowhere for this track. 
pretty cool to see. Well done, Jake. And uh, I'm pretty sure he'll be he'll be pumped about that coming in. You know, it's the pointy end of the championship. Yes, we're at the six, but um, it, it's good to see someone new and fresh. And it's good to see Josh Ritchie also taking his first ever spot. Such an emotional guy. He wears his heart on his sleeve. And, you know, last week it was controversy. And this week it's the stop, top step of the podium. I said we really need a podium inside the studios here so they can stand up there. They were all earlier talking about doing shoeys and all sorts of weird <laughs> things out there. I don't know. It's a motorsport thing. But, um, it's not Australia. We'll, 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 we'll get him to do a show here, but it's apparently big in F1 as well, though, so... Well, today I learned. Yeah, well, okay. Look, guys, it's it's just been absolutely fantastic. I mean, a bit calm during the first track, for sure. I mean, some expected results, but then you move into, uh, of course, Silverstone, and just absolute chaos, right? We've got our current leader, not even finishing the race, uh, the, world lap re the world record lap holder is out of the race. Josh Ritchie gets his first ever... Uh, pole position finish it's a world of first it's crazy and i don't think we could have asked for a better result without making any of the races uh feel like someone bumped them from behind yeah definitely so i think we're going to actually have a look at some results and uh see where everybody sits so there you go driver championship standings project cars to new zealand championship jordan penny still sitting there 222 but look at the gap closed josh ritchie 195 scott mcqueen look at the gap between second and third 195 and 193 for scott mcqueen so robert northway with that dnf on the last effort has dropped down to p4 158 points now for him so he's going to have to do some absolute magic in the next few races and interesting to note too josh ritchie has six second places to his name just one first robert has three wins and one second place so this is what we're talking about consistency is key ethan moore down in p5 there jake parker down in p6 louis de manila down in p7 and michael robinson languishing down in p8 he will not be stoked with that but i think someone who will be super stoked will be josh ritchie and scott mcqueen because i think now heading into the final four races we've outlined our top three and i think these are our three star insurance specialist drivers to follow for the final sort of stance of this race as we head to spa francorchamps and uh bruno next weekend yeah it's gonna be absolutely exciting as we go to central europe for the second last leg of the championship and guys look it's been fantastic taking us through uh the uk uh we, we thought gonna be a little bit tame today uh, especially after last week maybe it was for the first track but man i could not have asked for a better silverstone park but everyone if you want to earn yourself a copy of the game make sure you jump onto twitter uh ta tag us with let's play live hq and use the hashtag project cars to nz and tell us what your favorite color of car is and these guys have said red i've said purple but josh ritchie in the beautiful white car Maybe that's your favorite color now after that heroic performance. But ladies and gentlemen, this has been us for week six of the Star Insurance Specialist Project Cars 2 New Zealand Championship. So make sure you join us next week at the same time on Tuesday night for week number seven as we go to Central Europe. So everyone, we'll see you and all the motorsports action next week. was brought to you by Star Insurance Specialists. New Zealand's leading niche vehicle insurance provider. Sky City, world-class entertainment. Logitech G, gaming with science. And Samsung, redefine the game.